Conserve Conservation uh, Commissioned Order. It is March 10th and it is 6 p.m. Uh, the first two hearings we're going to open together. First hearing pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, there will be a public hearing to consider a notice of intent for James Xeras for the development of a single family residential house lot within the 100 foot wetland buffer zone. Address is Lot 3, Mary Ave Extension, Map 419. Lot 23, DEP file 199-1085. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, there will be a public hearing to consider a notice of intent for James Xeras for the construction of a three-lot residential subdivision with associated roadway utilities. The eastern portion of the project is within the 100-foot 100, 100 wetland buffer zone. Address is 1157R, Map 419, Lot 23. DEP file number 199-1086. Along with these two hearings, um, we're also going to open up a discussion for the enforcement order at Nine Penny Lane. Is there somebody here rep representing the applicant? Um, no, they are asking for a continuance. I did speak to Mr. Morrow um, during the week. I heard that from Mr. Liddy from Lucas Environmental. And after discussing with him, um, he found a couple, he had a couple issues with their wetland report. Basically, he was really concerned that there wasn't any pictures of the site, as well as he was concerned that they said there's no vegetation when he had gone out in May and he saw vegetation, hydrology, hydric soils, all three, he had all three of those there when he went out. Um, so his suggestion was, you know, after he, we kind of discussed it back and forth, discussing, you know, with possibility of appeals and adjudicatory hearings and where this would possibly go in the time frame, you know, he suggested that we meet on site with Mr. Morrow's consultant um, in May after they fence off the area to prevent the mowing from being done. Because it's from what I think happened was that they've been mowing the area so he didn't see any vegetation. So I remember you and me went out there, we were taking the soil test because there was ferns, there were sedges, there was rushes. It was very yeah. obvious and you could see where the water was flowing. Um, so I found, I also agree with his opinion. Um, he did give me a proposal for additional services. Um, it would basically be to do a secondary review and site visit with the applicant, and the cost would be $1,250. Does anybody have any discussion or anything to say about that? Concerns? So it was extended to May? Yes. Yeah. My, my personal opinion is, is whatever, it, I mean, we've kind of gone this far with getting a resource to evaluate it and, you know, um, I mean, I would hate to, for it to stop now. So if, if, if there are an additional cost because of these additional findings, then I think it seems to make sense for me. I agree. So with that, so it would be the site visit would happen, in, I'm hoping the beginning of May, we have to coordinate between the two consultants and myself and Mr. Morrow and possibly Mr. Cleves and anyone on the commission that wants to come. So that's my goal is to be May, so we're going to continue until then. Um, I believe I will have to re-advertise it because I believe we have, well, we'll have three members which we can operate with, but um, I don't know if everyone's been there for it, as well as we're going to hopefully have some new members um, if they get appointed. So then I want to re-advertise it so everyone can vote on mm -hmm. the hearing. And then um, that brings up the secondary part of this, is, is, isn't associ it's associated with it, but it's not associated with the enforcement order on Nine Penny Lane. Um, so we are working with the state. Mr. Morrow did send an email today, and he said you know, he did have a plan, and he kind of said, he told me that he had flagged the area in 2015, and we told Ms. Mr. Andoni the same thing. And the state had asked for a copy of that. And he submitted a sketch over kind of the Google Earth. It wasn't much to go off of, uh, but he's working with Mr. Cleves to produce a wetland replication area. Um, Denise Childs from DEP is really um, keeping him on task and okay. you know trying our best to get this done as quickly as possible to have the NOI the NOI file for his property and hopefully fix the water issues there. Which I know isn't the answer you want to hear. <laughs> So I guess for this moving forward, um, if we're going to re-advertise these or continue to continue them, if, if we're all in agreement that we really don't want to do anything until we can get out on site with everybody, 
Um, is that going to affect the enforcement order? Like, does our the homeowner for Nine Penny Lane have to consistently be the only one that is showing up to this meeting? We well, get I do enjoy when he comes to the meetings. It's very nice. Um, but, um, <laughs> and so we appreciate it as well. I just, you know, I don't want to waste anybody's time. It does and it doesn't. It affects it because they are roping in the replication area on the parcels that we're doing the Mary Ann subdivision on as it was owned by the same person and the contractor is the same contractor, but it is a separate issue. So they really should, can still file for the NOI, but they won't have the replication area with the NOI when they file it because they're trying to put the replication area on this plan. So I think in an ideal world, they would all be filed under at the same time, but they still should be making headway on it. You know, we still should have numbers. We'd asked for this, I think, and it was November of last year. Mm -hmm. um, Can I ask you a question? Yes. So I, I know these lots are near each other, but for this replication, this is the exact same wetland system. Like it's like we don't you don't do a rep replication on another wetland system. It has to be done on the, the same the same one that you've impacted. Yes. So the the wetland that spans these lots, they were all owned by Mr. Xeris, um, and then yeah. Harbor Classic Homes built the home the home there. And basically, what happens is the wetlands they start at Nine Penny Lot. Nine Penny Lane, and they kind of trail down, and they go back through the woods, kind of where we walked on that day yeah. for the site visit. And so they do connect. And so they, last time I spoke to them, they said they had an idea of a place to put it, um, but they need to do the plans. And I guess the engineer is really waiting for Mary Ave because this determination of where the resource area really does completely change the entire subdivision. It's just uh, like the way a wetland system works, though. Like it seems like you need to replicate it in the same area. If, I mean, if this is a vast system and you impact over here and you're doing the replication way over here, you're not. This area is not get, is is not getting is losing the benefit of the wetland, and you're replicating to an area that, you know, I mean, it, it absorbs water and it, it does a lot of things. So if it's if they're too far apart, you've kind of defeated the purpose of an actual replication. So I think you know that kind of discuss with um, Denise Childs is things that the lot, you can't replicate the amount of wetland they build on the lot, on the lot. And yeah. I think what they're, and when I can't speak for anyone from my understanding, the engineer doesn't, they can't put it where the wetland that we're seeing as a wetland is currently. And so they're trying to find a space in that area that still connects and still will take the water flow. But I don't believe that the re wetland replication area isn't gonna fix the water issues completely. They're going to have to go in and like evaluate the drainage when they do the NOI. They're going to have to put some, you know, some pumps in correctly. There's going to be a lot of work that they're going to have to do um, on his lot specifically. But the wetland replication area, you know, is kind of like per the law. If you fill in a wetland, you need to replicate that wetland. Oh, I know. So, right. In the so same connected system. If you start so pumping water in up here, you now you're adding even more water, at, like at, at a certain point in the in the wetland. And so if that replication isn't close to that, that source, now you could So it is all connected through channels and streams, and it is kind of all the same large wetland, all channels down. Um, and there's also another wetland yeah. replication area towards the end of Penny Lane that they did back in 1993, I believe. So they're all connected. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, it's more of a because you did this, like this is, you have to do this. Yeah. Part of the law thing, that's not, that's not really going to... You need to have to do yeah, this. it just seems like you want to do it, it as close to. I obviously you don't want to do it on this property yeah. because they, you know, it sounds like that property is pretty much all or was wetland. Yeah. So, so are you saying like kind of where the houses are, in Mary? Like well, that first house. Well, I basically? honestly like I don't look. You know, looking above, I'm not sure where one relates to the other. But if the existing replication or that the existing house that that was built on a wetland, like the replication should be somewhat close to that on the Marriott home. It's not at the far end yeah. down downstream. Is kind of I can, um, I'll let them know the suggestion yeah. to the wetland replication area. Um, it just seems like they, I don't really have anything right. solid in front of me. So right, it's, it's just sometimes they try to do what's convenient. You know, like, oh, no, we I can think. still build our houses if we put the wetland and way yeah. down the and, far end. And that's what they're doing, right? So the Xeris lot spans from Main Street all the way back to, you know, it's a huge property. So you've got the current house now, the proposed Marriott extension, and then you have a huge wooded lot. Um, my property abuts the open space where the Marriott Extension project is. To your point, they, they're not replicating the wetlands there to extend, which would increase the buffer zone. 
they're going way back into the woods, going away from the, the existing, or the proposed, at least from what Matt's explaining to me, as Mr. Morrow's explaining, is they're going back into the woods somewhere separate so that way they can still, um, still file their NOI and try to build houses on that open existing line. Yeah, and that, that's, that's to me, doesn't thing. seem like you're doing a true replication because, you know, like when they do floodplain work, it's like like for like elevations. You want it to be the same way. The, the same thing with a replication. You don't want to, you know, if, if it's, you know. No, I completely agree. And um, I'll make sure I re reiterate that comment to Mr. Morrow as well as to the state that the commission is concerned about that and thinks that it should be in the same area as the wetland they kind of took away. Anybody in public wish to speak on either of these? So, I mean, on the on the enforcement, like Angela said, they're they're connected, but they're I, I don't feel that they are connected, right? So, enforcement was ordered on May twenty sixth of last year. So, waiting another two months would put us a year on enforcement, uh, and it's all dependent on if that goes through, will it then solve the enforcement problem or will it remedy that? <coughs> At this point, I mean, we're, we're a year into it. We still don't have plans. Uh, we're almost a year. We're 10 months into it. We don't have plans. Is there a process that can be evaluated that is outside of that property and doing them do the, them doing the replication there? Um, since the enforcement's against the builder and not the property owner, um, I think that they're separate. And I, I don't know what the normal process is if there isn't direct replication areas within the, within the environment or within the boundaries. If I may. Yes. Um, so that really isn't. This really isn't a normal case. Um, <laughs> it's, really, it's a really. Why would, why would. It's a very odd case, and it's not typical. Typically, these things do not happen, and if they do happen, they replicate it on the same lot because typically you don't have a situation where, conveniently, the owner of both lots lives has the owns the lot right behind you, and you're able to have that. Um, so the other option that I could see would be they replicate the wetland on your lot which isn't ideal because they'd have to bring your lot down to add more water on your lot. So I can talk to Denise Childs and see if there's anything else that we could do. Maybe we could have them do the wetland, you know, pause, you know, the Mary Ave business and just, you know, we need the wetland replication area. We need the NOI for Penny Lane first. But I have to see how that would work out because we can't really tell a developer which timeline to go down when they're developing their land. Well, they might not want to. We've done that on other projects where we've asked for the, the replication to take place before construction. But we won't be able to do that without the actual NOI for yeah. the other plan because we don't know what they're doing there yet. Right. Until so we, we confirm where this other wetland is. So the, the Mary, well, uh, right, I guess the, the Mary Ave extension wetland has been defined, right? It has been flagged, I guess, right there. Yes and no. <laughs> there's, there's, there's sort of fuzziness on what the actual line is, mm -hmm. but could it be pushed up that they have to, to your point, have the, instead of waiting until May until all the vegetation grows in, go evaluate it now and sort of determine how to extend, like to add to that to that um, existing wetland to, to do replication there? Well, the reason we're wa waiting is because you want to see vegetation. So to legally be a wetland, you have to have vegetation and you have to have the soils. So they're saying that they don't see the, the vegetation on the site. Okay. When our wetland scientists went out there, they they and the agent <coughs> witnessed vegetation. So it sounds like they're gonna like mark off the area so nobody can mow it, wait for May to come, and then see what's what what natural vegetation is. So right now, you know, we just have two wetland scientists with two different opinions. And it is very difficult to do wetland delineations just because you have to go by fronds and you have to kind of look at the seed pods and dissect these plants, and it's very. It takes someone who's been doing it for 15 years rather than someone who's been doing it for two to really do it. And you want, we want to make sure that we're delineated delineate this correctly to make sure that we're not causing more water problems in the future. And the thing is, if we, you know, we decide to disagree on it now and they put the wetland right there in that spot, they're saying that it's like a wetland in a wetland yeah. kind of situation. It isn't really how you're supposed to do it. So I can talk to Denise to see if we can arrange, you know, make them do the wetland replication first, you know, while we produce the plans for that before we agree on this and just assume. Um, but they're really, they are really waiting for the subdivision plans to come through to decide if this is a wetland because this will completely um, jump the plans they have now. Good. Anybody else? 
Muslim in public. Second time, third and final time. All right. Um, both of these hearings will be continued to our March 24th yeah. meeting. Um, can we vote to transfer the money for the wetland fund for? Yes. Yes. If anyone wants to make a motion, so I'll ask you that. Yeah. What was the total? Uh, $1,250. i will make a motion to transfer $1,250 from the wetland fund to the general fund so that we may pay for the third party review. Second motion. Favor? Motion passes. Thank you. 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 Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, there will be a public hearing on a notice of intent for the installation of a gravity sewer service to an existing dwelling. The work will cross a stream on an existing bridge and will be within the riverfront area. Address is 181 Exchange Street, Assessor's Map 126, Parcel 6. Is there someone here representing this project? Yes, how you doing? How are you? Uh, uh, James McAuliffe, the owner. Um, uh, Sam Sweeney. Stamsky, Stamsky, Stamsky and McNary are my civil engineer. Um, we did, I don't know if you remember, two weeks ago meet and talk about the intent of the sewer and talked about the stormwater measures as far as um, hay bales and um, using SILSAC as far as the stormwater prevention um, measures or BMPs are concerned. The, the last time I left here, um, there were some questions um, about having the floodplain shown on the map, and that was to be provided by Stamsky and McNary. Um, the other question that came from you, Angela, was regarding strapping and how we're going to fasten that to the bridge. Um, the work, in my experience, when it comes to strapping, um, we would use uh, something you know a galvanized hanger something similar to this this is just a sample of a hanger um, I would even propose going something that's coated to help with that contact of that pipe and in fact even p potentially coat the pipe at the connection joint at the strap um, with you know a butyl tape of some sort I don't think that's necessary um, I did speak to my civil engineer about the concerns of, of how to strap it to the bridge. Um, the weight of that pipe is very minimal. It's not carrying a load of weight. It's really just the pipe itself until something passes through that pipe. The earth on either side of the bridge would primarily be the structure or the support for that pipe. Strapping it to the bridge would be an additional, um, you know, effort to support that pipe uh, to keep it from bellying over the years um, however the weight of that pipe is is rather insignificant plus we're going to be taking a six inch, six inch pipe and sleeving it with an eight inch pipe which the eight inch pipe will also be supported by the earth on either side so the six inch main pipe will also have the support of that eight inch pipe the earth and mechanical fasteners that we would fastened every 48 inches across the bridge at proper heights to creep, maintain the pitch needed. Um, that's, I just yeah. wanted to clarify, that was um, DPW's comments. I did put it out to them as a DPW and the health department as it is a sewer line and we want to make sure it's done correctly because you will have to get permits through their departments as well. Yep. Um, and DPW it was, is very concerned about, you know, the structure, you know, the structural engineers. So when you go get a permit from them, they may require more from you. Okay. Um, we really don't have the jurisdiction to demand it because it is the bridge. But um, I did not receive a plan that shows the flood zone. Okay. Um, at this time, and additional plans. Um, and then I do know that I spoke with Krista Knuth. The health director and we had looked at the site. We did a soil survey online, and he wasn't sure why you if you had evaluated doing the septic system in the back corner of the property that you own. Um, there was a thought of it, yes, um, but my hope is to go with the sewer tie-in. Okay, was there a reason? Just curious. Um, 
I think for for the cost, one uh, would be significantly less. The um, resale would be more attractive tied into the city sewer versus uh, maintenance of the septic system. Um, I personally am not a fan of septic systems. I don't think that, you know, 20 years from now, what, what's going to change or what's going to be required and what happens is, you know, unknown. However, I, the, the reasons, the primary reasons are for cost um, and resale. And then I just want to make another comment because it is a cold water fishery slack brook. Okay. So you can't do any work. You can't have any machinery, even no one can go into the stream we at any point. Um, you'd have to get a separate permit from the state. If I needed to go into the water. Yeah, so you can't have machineries, you can't have guys down there working in it. Um, other than the erosion controls, nothing can in the water. at that point. Is there a, a, a the limit of like, work that needs to be you know, marked out, or is it just the edge of the water? Um, you know, you'd have to be careful because if you are on the banking and you cause erosion to the water, then you'd have to stop work and okay. evaluate from there. Okay. So they might need an Army Corps permit or possibly um, either a federal or state permit. If we need to go if in If you water. need to, yeah. So I'll make sure that you understand that. Because I know you're talking about putting the bass hands on. you do this from above mm -hmm. the bridge? Okay. So that was a concern. So I went by there today. Um, I hadn't been by there in a while, and there was some neighbors that had mentioned that the city might have done some work in there. Um, and I know that it's, a, it's, it's private, but um, I know, like, I live near a private road that the city does some maintenance on because they have to get ambulances and, and you know, in case of a fire, they have, to, they have to be passable. The right side of that bridge looks like it's collapsing. Like, it looks like the Jersey barriers are starting to lean towards the, the brook instead of being upright. It, it, is there any... Is that like? Is there any kind of certification that bridges need? Because that, it doesn't seem. I mean, I don't. I don't know, but I mean, it looks like it's not for like the the most sound structure to be then attaching. You know, we're having raw sewage flowing across a potentially unstable bridge. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, the Jersey barriers are leaning out towards like the the what the brook, so it's not like flat anymore. Okay. Um. So like if that Jersey, if, in other words, if that Jersey barrier fell over, hit the pipe, now you gotta, you know. Like, I understand your concern there. Um, I don't, I don't have a, a response. Yes, it could happen. Right. I mean, because ultimately we gotta protect the the resource area, you know. And, and to me, right now, putting a sewer line on a potentially a, what, what looks like a, I mean, I'm not an engineer, like I said, but it doesn't look stable to me. It doesn't look like something. Really? I mean, I've been over that bridge a, a hundred times. I've looked at it. It looks well constructed. It's not the way we would build a bridge today, but it, I don't know how long it's been there. Yeah. I, I just bought the property five months ago, six months ago. Um, I have had heavy equipment go over that bridge. There's never been a problem with that bridge. If the Jersey barriers, which I didn't place there, yeah. I'm assuming the, the city placed those there. I have no idea. Um, you know, I can replace the Jersey barriers and put up some sort of guardrail, but that would require work above the the stream. I mean, that, that's just that. That's my my real concern is. Yeah, but a tree could fall and affect that pipe also. You know, that's yeah. another concern that I had as well. Um, I mean, that bridge. In, I mean, I've been on the commission maybe fourteen years, and that's. I've seen it look worse. You know, there were Jersey barriers that were either missing or, you know, like it looked like they were about, you know, they were they were f like about to fall in the water. And I think the city went in then, and, and and you know, like, I mean, I don't know how much of it is bridge and how much of it is just fill brought in. Like, I don't know if there's like what's causing the erosion that's causing Jersey barriers to sink. I, I don't I don't know what you're referring to as far as the Jersey barrier sinking. Yeah. I, can, so I was there the, yesterday. Yeah, the ones on the right hand side lean. Pulling in or yeah, pulling out? Pulling, like, yeah, the leaning out. Like no, that. when you're pulling in off the street? Yeah, so if you're pulling in from the street. On the right hand on the side. Right -hand side. Uh, well, I mean, the natural terrain, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I can, I can go look at them. Yeah. We can debate whether they're, you know, level or plumb and, or if they're leaning. Um, they don't look 
terribly out of place to me. Um, maybe the bridge was built at a pitch where those are following that. Yeah. I, I don't know if right. that well, has that's anything. The, I mean, yeah, you go on it every day. You wouldn't, you know, eventually you kind of get used to things too. You know what I'm saying? If you when you did when you see something for the first time or haven't seen it in a while, you know, things you recognize things that you might necessarily not understood. Understood. Um, so yeah, if you want to check it out, I just that that that's my concern is just the the integrity of what's above the pipe is it, kind of. I think that was all, you know, DPW's concern as well as the health department's concern as well is that what happens if you know if the bridge fails and it breaks or if a tree falls and damages the damages the line what's protecting the brook um, and so they wanted to make sure that we had evaluated all the different options you know if the septic, septic system was an option um, I know it's not ideal cost wise but the health plus department plus it's 200 feet up the way the road the septic system yeah it's up, it's up it would have to be yeah. up 200 feet up gradient from the house. Yeah, so you can do a pump station. So you have to so pump it, and then, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, so I think that's why, you know, the DBW was concerned about the structural integrity of the bridge. Had, you know, the structural engineer had looked at it, you know, and I do understand those concerns. Um, I do understand the concern about the floodplain because if we're gonna be adding fence posts and safety rails, all these other things, we need to make sure that they're all out of the floodplain and that we're a lot, you know, putting in the correct allotments that we need on the plans. Because if you take away floodplain one area, you have to replicate it somewhere else, basically. If I'm taking away floodplain by installing a pipe underground? No, I'm talking about if you had to put guardrails in oh. or any other sort of thing, you'd have to replicate I don't want to put it, I don't want to, I don't want to change the bridge at all. I... Not, not your, you know, your choice. I'm just, I'm delaying the commission know my concerns as well. Um, and the you know, one thing I would most definitely suggest as a special condition when we get to that point um, would be to make sure that it's deeded, that there's a deed drawn up that states that the owner of this home is the owner of the bridge. Um, doesn't that takes, exist already? I'm sorry? Doesn't that exist already? It doesn't, it, it exists, but it doesn't exist. Like it doesn't actually say, you have to actually go deep into the deed 150 years back and look at the cursive writing and have some a specialist look at it. Like I had to do and pay, pay for a lawyer to look at it. Um, so I would like that, that's something I'm gonna recommend is that we add a special condition to have something drawn up that states that the owner of this home is the owner of the bridge and accepts all responsibility for any damage caused. Because I think that's, you know, that's your- cause From the bridge. Caused by the installation of a pipe to it, or in the, in, the bridge, in the future? If the pipe in the future, if the sewer pipe fails and starts leaking into the stream, that the owner of the house will have to take on that responsibility. Okay. I just want to make sure that's clear so we don't have any issues when, you know, if the bridge failed and the city runs out there and does an emergency repair and then builds whoever, you know, you're not planning on staying there forever, builds a future homeowner. They're like, oh, I don't own the bridge. I wasn't told I own the bridge. Um, and we get into the debate of, you know, who's going to pay this $1 million bill? I want to make sure that that is most definitely clear, especially because it is a sewer pipe. And I do understand everyone's concerns with the banks eroding there and all the issues we've had on Slackbrook in the past, the past 25 years. I do understand the concern that Larry's, you know, about the erosion and about the bridge possibly tilting. That's just my suggestion. Um. Well, it sounds like we, though, are like we're still waiting on some information that we need before we can even think about voting rates. Right? We're still waiting for plans. Yeah, with the floodplain. With the floodplain and the cross section. I think it's cross section with the bridge on it. Do we have any um, information on the possible alternative of a septic design? I'm just hearing that there's a possibility that there's another place that you have to pump uphill. It would be in the only, Here. without even, and that's just an assumption, we'd have to do, you know, test pits and soil samples to see if it would even be feasible. So what if it weren't, you know, with the... If it wasn't, then, right. then there that's is no option. alternative. Yeah. But right now, we don't know that. And personally, I would like to see more information for an alternative. I'm not a big fan of putting raw sewerage over a perennial stream that's a cold water fisheries habitat. Under any condition, I mean, you've got all kinds right, of- Right, but if his septic here, system fails and you've got the same thing happening because everything goes downhill to that stream. Right, but 
the discussion that we were just listening to about the bridge and the possibility of trees falling and, and who knows what, because the pipe is virtually outside as compared to 20 feet. a system that's buried in the ground. I'd like to see more information about an alternative. How do you want to get that information? I guess the applicant could provide it. Or the Board of Health could provide it also, right? Somebody should provide it. You'd have to contact them and see what they would provide for that. But what do you what do you want provided? It's a septic system that would be pumped uphill to that location. I just want to see if it's a feasible alternative. I mean, the only thing that would cause it not to be feasible would be the soils. Right. And when I spoke and walked the site with the health department, he told me that that's probably not likely, not 100% convinced, mm -hmm. because of the historic and the data that's on that piece of land. But we don't know at this point. Angela, when you spoke with the Board of Health and the DPW and they expressed their concerns, did they express wanting to see information on that alternative? I know they asked about the yes, system. So, um, the director of the Board of Health is who, I've been, who I was working with on this. You know, he said he'd like to, you know, I spoke with him and he's like, you know, asking, you know, was it? Was there a secondary analysis done of a septic tank up there? Because um, when we did the soils online on the NRCS soil survey, this looked like it'd be okay soils for a septic design, um, but you won't really know until you get out there and you do a test pit. Mm -hmm. And so regardless though, whether it the alternative is the septic system or the sewer line, it's going to require a permit from the Board of Health, right? Um, so for sewer, it would be a permit from the DPW. The septic tank would be a Title V from the Board of Health. Um, if you did, if they did go the route of the septic tank, it would be out of our jurisdiction. I'm trying to scroll in to see. Who's the DPW person that you're referring to? Um, Mr. John Roseberry. I spoke to him about this. That's why I went with this salt measure. He was the one that said, why don't you just tie into the sewer? And I said, well, I have to cross the stream and there's a bridge. And he goes, well, I'm sure you could put it against the, the bridge. Yep, and he made the comments, like I, I shared with you, about the structural, he wanted a structural engineer as well as... A structural engineer to strap a PVC pipe to a, a bridge is excessive, in my opinion. But if that's what he wants, then I, I can, I'll call him tomorrow and talk to him about it yeah, and exactly. see what he has to say. Um, I think it's more, it's not just... It's more to evaluate the bridge and make sure it's stable. And that's a well. That's a different conversation altogether. Um, because we need that. <clears throat> that's my concern. Is <clears throat> I don't want I, if we're going to put if you're proposing putting sewer on on a, a bridge and you're asking me. I'm proposing what, to put a pipe on a bridge that's carrying sewer when someone correct. takes a shower, flushes a toilet. Correct. So, and I'm looking at it like I need to protect the resource area that's below it. And so if that's strapped to a bridge that potentially is not stable, then I don't feel that, that that's an adequate So a, a, a structural engineer will evaluate, evaluate but he, won't, he would never stamp off saying this bridge will never fail. That's not what they're asking. They're asking if it would be able to safely have the sewer line on it. And if the conditions it's as a, it exists it's today It's a granite are, bridge. It's not going, it's, is it going, if we have an earthquake, this building could come down, that bridge could go down, right? And sewer would be everywhere depending on where this earthquake hits. That bridge is granite blocks stacked up with C channel holding up the asphalt. A, a structural engineer will tell you exactly that. He's not going to say that bridge is strong enough to hold a PVC pipe. And I don't quite frankly want to pay thousands of dollars to have someone say you can put tap cons and hangers and this PVC pipe on the side of a bridge. It's not like that, but you also want to make sure that it's that is actually strapped poorly to distribute the weight safely. So it, if, I'll put, I'll safely put, yeah, yeah, okay. It, I mean, if you look at those, those, those jersey barriers, if one of those, you know, it, it, you know, if they, are they on a stable base? I mean, 
I see that there's, you know, pieces of iron, you know, going across, you know, stacked up granite, you know, but the roadway itself, is that stable? Is that road surface? I mean, it looks like it's kind of going out towards, towards the brook. So if there's, okay. a, if there's a pipe hanging right underneath it, I mean, yeah, I know, in, you know, a tree could fall on it and that's an act of nature, but a deteriorating bridge isn't an act of nature. And that thing's been deteriorating since the day they built it. So is this building, so is everything in this world that we built. No, not to the extent, I mean, if, if you had seen it when, when I was first on the commission, there was, you know, the Jersey, there was missing Jersey barriers. I don't, I think they might've even fallen in, in the brook, you know? I'm the owner from September of 2019. What happened prior no, to that, right. I don't know. I can't speak to it. I don't know what repairs have been done to well, that. Well, neither do I, and that's right. my concern. Is you know, was there a permit? Did the DPW do that work? I don't know. Well, I don't. I, I don't know. And so that what I'm saying is, if that starts to, if if, if it's not on a stable, if those, that's not on a stable base, it's just going to continue to be a. You know, it could cause it. They could fall in again. It could. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so it sounds like a, a septic system is what I need to do and do some test pits and prove out that I can put it up there because I, I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars and then come back and say, hmm, you know, we're still concerned about a bird landing on that pipe and breaking it. Well, that's not what the commission's saying. It, it's, it's, it seems as though it's coming across that you don't want that pipe on that bridge. That's the impression I'm getting. I have no opinion if the pipe goes there, if it goes anywhere. Well, I think I'm interpreting what the commission is saying is that they want to make sure that the bridge is going to be, you're going to be able to attach the pipe to the bridge in a way that's not going to alter the bridge or cause an issue during construction, have grants going in. The, the quarter inch by two inch tapcons going into granite blocks that weigh 600 pounds each. Yes, yeah, so if you can have your, you know, if you have an engineer that can say, yes, that those are adequate, yeah, I think that would be suffice okay. for the commission or, um, I mean, like dams, for example, you look at a dam, the thing is a solid piece of granite, and every year they have someone that looks at it and says, the integrity of this dam is, is, is still intact. You know, it, it's, they don't, you know. So does someone have to come out and look at this bridge every year then, after we do this, or is that, you know? Well, I'm not gonna, I, this is the thing, is I'm being asked to make a decision on whether or not. A pipe that, can go on, on, the, on the side of the And it's granite. gonna protect the resource area. That, that's my whole thing. And if, if, you, if you can show me the, 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 the bridge is there's nothing sun. There is nothing that I can prove 1,000% to you that would prevent that pipe from ever being compromised. Oh, no, I, there's never going to be a, a perfect scenario. But, you know, I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is, that, you know, I don't have anything. I just, all I'm looking at is a, you know, a bridge with a history of structure, you know, with, with the roadway collapsing. I don't know if that's the structure. That may not be the, I, I might be speaking not in the proper engineering or construction terms, but it's the roadway itself that, that, that's collapsing in, maybe not the bridge. So maybe the roadway is, is in, in the surface that you're driving over is, is the concern and not the, the bridge structure itself. It's the, the roadway. The crowning of the road, right? I, I understand what you're saying. Um, So, Angela, you said you had to go back quite a long way to find out that this bridge was even deeded to that property, yes. right? So, if that's the case, and if, if repairs have been done on that bridge at all, there should be some record of that, right? Whether, like, if the city, if the DPW ended up going out there to do something, or if a previous homeowner did something, because I, and I, and I that could be a big ask, but it seems like that's part of, of our, of the concern is, have repairs been done on that bridge? What kinds of repairs have been done on that bridge? So there's been no repairs done on the bridge. The DPW has come out and filled a sinkhole uh, when, the, when the roadway, when the right of way that they maintained where the water line is, was at risk. They'll come in, they'll fill a sinkhole. You know, they have to plow, they fix the Jersey barrier so they're good, look like they're falling in because no one was maintaining the bridge and there are residents that live over there. There's kids that, you know, they have right. kids there in the summer and, you know, there's a risk. 
and they need to look at ambulances and fire trucks across the bridge for safety reasons. Uh, but no one has pulled a permit to maintain the bridge or do any work in the bridge since I've been here and since my records exist. It doesn't seem like anyone pulled a permit to build a house behind mine either. Where's that sewer going? House behind yours? Mm -hmm. Which house would that be? I have no idea what the address is. Is it the slot back here? No, that's the, those are the people that were here. Wait, hold on. Street, my house, my land. They have a, these people have an abandoned car on my property. Not these people, but this right of way up here, which goes to this lot up here, there's a house up there. So east by Colonial Drive? Um, it's right there. So hmm? I can tell you right now. This was built in 1986, which is about the time when they started doing the Riverfront Protection Act, so they did not need to have a permit to build the bridge. And I'm also just going to see the houses right there. It was 185 feet from the stream, so it would be out of the jurisdictional area of the Wetland Protection Act. The house is? Yes. So Where's the sewer going? Sewage. Most Sewage, it must likely have a septic tank, or if that's the house I'm thinking of, I think that's the house where the gentleman um, has a composting system, possibly. I don't believe they have sewer. No one up behind that, over on that edge of the stream, has sewer. <clears throat> so, I guess... No sewer. From what, as we're talking, I don't, it, I don't think it's the structure of the bridge. I think it's really the roadway and the integrity of okay. maintaining, you know, keeping the roadway flat and okay. not falling in, you know. I don't know who, who designed it, who poured it, who placed it. Yeah. If they designed it to pitch away so water runs off the bridge, I can't say it. Is it structurally uh, an issue? Doesn't seem to be to me. If you want me to get a structural engineer, I mean, I'll I, consider it. But I'm, if that's the case, then I'm just going to go and put a septic system in. Yeah. But I need to get test pits to work. And so if those don't work, what do we do? Then you'd have to do the sewer line. But and then what do I do? Because I'm already here with the sewer line. And I'm, I'm, I'm facing a, a roadblock with certain things that are. So I think, Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. But Larry's just asking, and what DBW is asking for, if you let me finish, please, sure. is that you just provide a, a statement from a structural engineer stating that the placements that you're proposing are fine for the bridge. It will not compromise the bridge. Okay. I can do that. I think that's all we're really asking for, as well as the floodplain on the plans. But that's not what, that's not what no, this gentleman's it, asking. He's talking about the surface of the road. The, it's the road, sir. I, like, I look at the bridge, and I, you know, it's it's the, the, the top of the bridge and where the Jersey barriers have historically, you know, and I, they probably get moved from plows over the years, yeah. you know, right. heavy s snow, whatever. So they probably do get moved by a snow plow pushing snow, which then, you know, shifts them out maybe further than they're supposed to. Maybe they're not, like, somehow, I don't know, do you anchor a Jersey bear? No. They just... So those are sitting there weighing 400 pounds, yeah. and then it would require quite a bit of force to move yeah. them. So. Obviously, it's a safety measure, so people don't drive off oh, the bridge. Oh, I understood. I understood. Um, but if someone drives off the bridge, you know, we've got another issue there. If you drove fast enough, you would hit the Jersey barrier and everyone would go over. So, you know, the, the road being crowned like that, and if those are sitting out of plumb, remove the Jersey barriers and put up a guardrail. You know, but then you're working above the stream. So I just want to clarify, so I understand your concerns, Larry, that we are concerned about the roadway, and it's definitely something that the property owner needs will have to address in the future or there'll be disastrous effects. But that's not the permit. I do understand the permit, we can't really, you can ask for them to ride yeah, something, it's just, but we can't yeah. require it's just, that's If what above the, the pipe isn't stable, then that could potentially impact the pipe, which okay, so doesn't. You want like, instruct, uh, the engineer to come out and say that the bridge is stable, the bridge as a whole is stable enough to have the pipe on it, basically. I'm just more concerned with what's sitting above the pipe. It sounds like, I mean, I don't have a cross-section here, but 
it looks like the pipe's going to be but basically kind of underneath the jersey barriers, right? Essentially? It would be a few feet below that, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's really, like, if that stuff, if, if that was to give, there's, you know, you've got a, a pipe just hanging out the side with potentially, you know, with, with unsecured 400-pound pieces of cement on top of it. You know, because we have had issues. I mean, in the past, they've been, they, instead of being straight, they're, like, at different angles. Yeah, I think at one point there was one missing, like, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. You're worried about the, the Jersey Bears, basically. The, the, yeah, the, the, what's above it, yeah. So would your preference be having guardrails put in instead of the Jersey Bears? It seems or like, I mean, it, it as seems... A, as an option. Does the city want the bridge? I mean, can the... Yeah, I, I don't have the jurisdiction. Exactly. <laughs> can they be secured? I mean, drill... Don't they have the things where you... You can put rebar down rebar. through them. I mean, I, I don't know. Sure. I, I don't know enough about. We can put rebar through them if, if if that's what you know. So to put them in a more permanent place, Jersey Bears are typically temporary. Yeah. Um, at least where they are right now, um, and on my construction sites, we move them around all the time. Yeah. Block roads. You know, maintain you know right away and direct traffic, yeah. etc. But those aren't going anywhere. Those are there for the long term, I'm, I'm guessing. They're not going anywhere, so don't worry about the pipe. <laughs> no, I'm saying they're not gonna they're not gonna you're not gonna move them. They're not there's no plan they're gonna, I don't plan on moving them. Right. I don't they're I don't think they, place. they're not gonna go anywhere. If that road starts to move a little bit, would they fall into the water? Yes, but they would fall not straight down either. So I don't think they would hit the pipe if they ever fell. If a plow hit it hard enough which would be a significant amount of force to move those that far. Um, I can I can get rebar, you know, yeah. well, I mean, down through there. If, uh, if someone's going to look at it anyway, they can... But if I put rebar in those, I'm going to have to pound that into the asphalt, which I wouldn't want to do anyway, you know, you start yeah. affecting well, that. If someone's going to look at the bridge, if the DPW is asking for the bridge, then if they can just say that the... Have the DPW that. is asking for a strapping in place and spacing... Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that my s structural engineer needs to go and look at the bridge. I mean, maybe he will. Yeah. I, I don't even have a structural engineer, so I'm going to have to yeah. go hire one and spend unknown amount of money for this now. But, which so, I'm already four five thousand dollars into right now. So. So, from my understanding, what the commission is this piece of paper. Sorry. Okay. So, from my understanding, the commission probably want to continue the hearing. If you want to continue with the hearing, I'm assuming you don't want to withdraw. I don't want to withdraw, but I, I guess I need to contact a structural engineer. But I'm first going to call Roseberry and talk to him about what he really wants specifically. So, I asked them for their comments on this, so the commission can be aware of any issues that they might not be experienced in. Their comments don't necessarily. He really has no sway over the commission. He's just you know, producing comments, and you can somebody talk to him. Um, I just wanted you you'd be prepared when you go to the permit from the, him. He may ask for more information from you. So the strapping and the spacing and the I do agree fasteners, that. you want that? I do. I can't tell you what to do, but I do agree that I think that's you want to make sure it's secure. You don't want to have a risk of it falling off or not being secured properly. Understood. That was the intent all along, was to fasten it to that bridge. Yes, but I do understand where he's coming from, where he wanted a structural engineer to designate the spacings. To make sure that you're not putting, you're not not that you would, but make sure you're not putting stress on one section of it and not too many is a problem exactly. too. I understand that. So you want to make sure you do it correctly. Mm -hmm. So from what I'm hearing to the commission for the next meeting, um, we are asking for the plans with the floodplain on them, as well as the cross section that shows the profile that shows the bridge. Um, uh, maybe discussing with your engineer securing the Jersey barriers if that's possible. Um, if not, if there's anything that you can do to protect, I can send, I can send this to you in email. Okay, as thank well. you. Um, anything that you can do to kind of pro provide extra protection for the sewer line from any possible debris falling over. Um, and then possibly a rough draft with something to be recorded with the deed about the ownership of the sewer line and responsibility.
folks have any comments, concerns, things they'd like to bring up. Apparently the septic system will turn the bits off the table. I don't want to I don't want to spend the money to get an operator and an excavator over to, to dig test pits until I'm told otherwise. And then I'm going to spend the money to find out that the test pits fail, and then we're going to be back here doing this again. So I'd like to just do this. I mean, it's really a, a simple, simple... I understand your concerns about all of this. I'm not naive to that. I get it. Um, but this is a, an exposed pipe of about 20 feet that these straps won't even do anything except look good on the side of that bridge. Um, the Jersey barriers that are up there, the likelihood of those falling in there without force from a man-made product like a plow or an excavator or machinery are slim to none. The wind won't blow those over. And if that bridge starts to tilt a little bit more, um, it, it, you know, it would take a, a lot of a lot of movement for those to, to move. But I understand your concern. I'm not saying you're crazy. I get it. I'm I'm just a little in my world, I, I would have done that and been done months ago, and it would have been working great and, and no problems. But I understand the conservation. I've been SWIFT trained for years. Um, so I know about what you guys do. I get it. I've been through a lot of training for stormwater prevention, and I don't find this to be a, in my experience of 25 years of doing this, I don't find this to be a, a problem at all. But I have to prove it out to you guys, I guess. So I will get a structural engineer, spend some more of my money, and have him provide some strapping and spacing recommendations and fasteners. Um, I'm going to yell at Sam McNary for not sending you the flood zone. Um, and I'm going to call Roseberry tomorrow. And then I'll consider talking to my site operator and see if you can do some test pits for me for a reasonable price consider a septic, but I don't want to do that. No. Uh, so I want to make sure that you fully understand that you also, because conservation and stormwater are similar, but they're also very different. For this permit, you also do have an option if you don't want a continuance and you want the commission to vote for it right now. Um, you can always appeal their decision to the state. You have 10 days to appeal it. I want to make sure you're aware of all your options. I don't want you to walk out of here feeling like you're backed into a corner. I feel like I'm back into a corner, but I get why. Um, but I'm not going to ask you to vote on it because I know what you're going to say, and I don't want to go to the state level. I'm hopeful that I can prove this out and get approval from you guys and get the sewer tied in at the street. So. Okay, any more discussion? Would anybody in the audience like to speak on this? Paul, did you want to say something? No, no? Okay. Second time, third, and final time. Okay. Um, we will continue this to our March 24th meeting. Um, and Angel will email you. Okay. Everything we just discussed. So okay. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Next hearing, pursuant to Mass General Law, Section 131, Section 40, as amended, there will be a public hearing on a notice of intent for the construction of an addition to an existing structure with associated site work. This work will be within the riverfront area, address 495 Main Street, Map 266, Parcel 6. Is there someone here representing the applicant? Yes, ma'am. Chris Anderson, Canning Engineering, here on behalf of Duran, GMC, and Buick. 
for the construction of a uh, proposed addition at an existing uh, facility at 495 Main Street. Uh, just to orientate ourselves here on the page, we have Mead Street that runs along the, uh, in the general lengthwise of the plan, uh, with Main Street slash Route 13 going along the side. Um, and just to orientate ourselves a little further, the Route 2 entrance ramp is a little bit further off the page. Uh, currently, the property is developed. It does contain an existing structure that's being utilized as a automobile dealership repair facility. Uh, the majority of the site has been rendered impervious through pavement, building, um, and various other features over the history of the entire property. Um, the National River does flow along the uh, northern limits of the uh, actual building itself, um, and with that, there's the associated bordering vegetated wetlands and riverfront area along with that area. In addition, there is also a bordering vegetative, I mean, sorry, a bordering land subject to flooding that runs along the National River as well. Uh, just to orientate ourselves here, uh, it's about elevation 315 near the front corner of the, or this corner of the building, and as it proceeds down the property, it ends to about 314 off the limit of our proposed work. Uh, <clears throat> it's our intent uh, to construct a new addition uh, to be utilized as a additional showroom space and additional repair facilities. Um, that will tack on to the existing structure itself. Uh, this structure will be placed within an area of existing pavement, um, so we're not increasing uh, substantially the amount of impervious area in this area. Uh, there will be some additional grading around the building addition itself in order to help facilitate the actual use of the building and the existing use of the, or continued use of the existing building. Um, Around the entire perimeter, or around the perimeter of the actual new uh, parking areas, uh, we're constructing a three-foot crushed stone apron to help provide some velocity mitigation as uh, storm runoff is uh, sheet uh, flowed off of the uh, paved areas. Uh, currently, there is no uh, drainage infrastructure in the area. Uh, currently, the runoff goes either towards um, some of the existing catch basins that connects to the city infrastructure or overlands directly into the Nashua River. <clears throat> Due to the nature of the project, stormwater management is applicable, uh, but as I stated earlier, the proposed additions will be uh, constructed within the uh, existing paved areas, so it's gonna be, we're considering it as a redevelopment um, project and it's relative to stormwater management. Uh, we are currently going through planning board approvals as well and uh, DPW and Engineering have reviewed our uh, plans and our drainage review of the site and agree with our interpretation of this. Um, around the entire perimeter, we'll be utilizing straw walls and sill fence uh, for permanent, or straw wattle, straw safe hay bales and sill fence, uh, just due to the close proximity to the river and uh, relatively steep slopes that are currently there. Uh, hay bales are a little bit more sturdier and will provide a little bit extra protection than straw wall in this instance. Um, we're proposing no alteration to the borderlands under the flooding, so we're no floodplain compensations required for this uh, project. Um, and we will be uh, uh, performing work within the riverfront so that there will be the riverfront alteration calculations as well. Um, that's the general gist of the projects. If there's any questions from the commission, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, I don't know if you prior had said it, and sorry if I missed it, it's so you're completely out of floodplain? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, the floodplain kind of follows, there's a bunch of old structures out there from the old dams and this. Yeah. Uh, everything that you can ever imagine out of the natural in this area. Yeah. Um, it kind of flows just along that, just okay. off. And they did also provide their letter of map provision at the Um, are you going to need any foundation work for the new addition, or is it just going to be there will be a, There will be a foundation, um, but it's going to be your typical four-foot frost wall foundation, nothing fancy, um, and whatnot relative to that. Okay. Did you get um, the comments from the comments? I did receive the EP comments, and I can go through those at the commission with as well. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So it sounds good. Thanks. It's my first time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the first comment is relative to the abutters notification. Uh, we did notify the abutters for the primary work um, on the property. Uh, there is some work, uh, general grading on the other budding properties. There's three general properties in the entire development, but the mass majority of the work is being proposed on one lot. 
and that was the lot that we notified. Um, so we acknowledge that if it, we do believe we have notified the providers appropriately, but um, they're just calling that out as a concern. And we can provide, if the commissioner would like, the additional lot numbers and uh, mapping parcels just for the over conditions that the commission does choose to do so, just so they have that. So the parking area and the building, the like two separate lots, is that? There's a lot a line that comes right through here. So there's a little bit of earthwork in this area, but the actual building itself is located on okay. another lot, all owned by the same entity, okay. but just, okay. So excuse me, that small corner there where you have to do that earthwork, those abutters have not been notified. Correct. Okay. Which would just extend our appeal period to 90 days if, we, if that's deemed an issue. Would it be easier if you just to notify them than have the 90 day bill period? Potentially, yeah. Okay, just curious. Mm -hmm. It'll end up being at least some of the same abutters anyway, yeah. so I would imagine there are not going to be too, 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 too many within that distance that you need to go, that 100 foot distance. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I, I'm not sure how the rest of the commission feels. I would say just, just to sort of complete the picture. Yeah, and I would say just cover yourself and, and cover who you're representing. Yep. Just having that down that you've done that, even though I don't really, I, I don't anticipate anybody yep. having a problem. Um, just so that if anybody wanted to give any issues, you could say, oh, well, we did notify you. Um, the state won't overturn an appeal because of better request issues as long as the commission accepts it. But I was thinking just so you don't have to wait 90 days, wait the 10 days if you notify them. And then yeah, they exactly. Can I'm not sure if that's what your applicant would want. but. But even knowing it, I mean, it seems like just the right thing to do as a commission to, if that's one of the requirements to file, we just cover our bases and, and if it's a matter of mailing out three letters, you know. Yeah. Understood. Does the map of parcel risk it? The other one's a second. I'll pull that. The other three, the other two parcels would be 266.7. And six two sixty six one. And that would give us time. I mean, if we, we take a look at it this weekend, you know, before the next meeting, you know, if they're already notified, we can vote on it with a clean conscience the next meeting. And that. Because I don't see, like looking at it, I don't see any major concerns. I mean, I'd like to just look at the closest point, you know, to the water. Yep. Is there any kind of activity in the back? behind the building? Uh, there is additional, oddly enough, I didn't know this, but there's actually uh, additional storage underneath in the basement for cars. Yeah. So they do drive around and there's an overhead door right here uh, that goes into the basement area. So they do store some cars in that area. They don't like work on cars or wash cars or anything else back, right? No. Okay. No, it's pure storage at that okay. point in time. They're all new cars, so yeah. if they're leaking, they have other issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Chris already knows, but I did discover that there was an open order of conditions on this, which Handicap Engineering is taking care of. Um, but I was just wondering, in the proposed addition, are they in the, I know you said they'll be doing work in there, are they putting yep, yeah, so like additional drainage and catches? Yes, ma'am. So there will be a new four drain system in the four bays that are going to be constructed. Um, by code, we have to uh, pipe that through an MDC gas trap to capture all the sediments and the gas and everything like that and then that gets discharged to the municipal sewer system. So um, there's no work going to be proposed or car work outside of the building envelope. So any kind of uh, spills or anything like that would be immediately captured by the floor drains and any runoff from snow or rain uh, melt on the cars themselves will be contained entirely within the actual uh, building itself. Yeah. I think everything checks out. I would just like to see it in person. Uh, let's see, the second comment is relative to the floodplain. 
Uh, just a little more clarification. Uh, as I said before, uh, the floodplain elevation runs along the uh, bank of the uh, river about 315 up in the corner here, and by the time we get down to the limit of our work, we're about 314. We're, nowhere, we're not doing any work in that area, so uh, we are uh, pretty much in compliance with the flood yeah, calculations issues. Uh, the third comment was relative to stormwater um, and the fact that we're considering this project a redevelopment. Uh, they just had concerns relative to the fact that uh, there is an existing pavement going there now, and there's an existing pavement going there now every day. Uh, and they're just making um, additional comments saying that it is indeed redevelopment, but there is that concern as well. And as part of our filing before the notice of intent, we did, ran through all the compliance calculations. Um, and the stormwater checklist to document that we are in compliance with stormwater management. Now, where does the water go from the building? Is it is it a flat roof and it gets, does it go towards the river though? Um, there'll probably be roof drain scuppers along the outer edge and the uh, overland flow into this uh, okay. system over here. But is that the, on the plan just in case that uh, changes? Not yet, no. They're still working on the final you know, okay. control plans. So if this is something you can show for the final plan that just shows the weather? That would be something that would be a construction plan. It's yeah. Well, I'm just saying I, we don't really necessarily want the water running off the roof going right out the back and down into the, into the river. Okay. You know, maybe we just make it a condition. Would that be easier? If that was, if we decided. Just something, you know what I mean? If, if, you, if you're saying it's going to go out front and if, Game time decision is it's going to suddenly go out back and it's going to just all that water is just going to. No, it's understood. Here we can. Um, <laughs> you know, because we just saw, you know, you want you want to somehow control erosion. Yep. So if suddenly things change. And, no, understood. We could probably condition that. that should be an issue. If I may, have one other question. Just there's a lot of writing on here. I couldn't find where the snow storage was. Yes, so that was a comment that um, the planning director came up with again. Uh, so we are we have revised the plan uh, to address their comments, uh, the planning department. So there will be snow storage along the grass slope um, on the side of the parking here, and additional spaces. Uh, there says there's a lot of display cases. We're going to be pushing snow into those areas. So one thing on snow storage is, I mean, that's something that I kind of, you know, a lot of times I've seen over the years where things, like, they'll just stop pushing things to the back of the lot, back of the lot. So if we had a condition in there that, I mean, I don't know what the distance would be, but within a certain, you know, within a certain amount of feet from the, the property line, you know, from the edge of pavement, we don't want snow being pushed. Or I guess we don't want to push beyond the, the pavement. Yeah, so right now this entire area right through here is a mix of gravel and pavement. Yeah. So uh, the storage areas that we're showing are within those areas that are already disturbed. Yeah. And they're already pushing snow there at the end of the day. Yeah, but I mean, we don't want to go into the river. Like, in yeah. the, behind that building, we don't want them pushing oh, it yeah, back. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You know, that's kind of... Because, I mean, I can see it real easily. Just, you know, take all that stuff and just push it back. You know, go goes down the hill and nobody sees it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe some, we, we are used to that, sometimes they'll put signs that say, you know, no snow storage right at the edge of pavement. Okay. Something like that, just as a visual. Okay. Yeah, we can, would that be? Additional signage along the uh, edge of the pavement shouldn't be that big of an issue. I believe that, I think the standard order conditions has placards go up at the end yeah. of the day, so um, we can put the wetland signs and no dumping in that area as well. Okay. But again, it's such a small area. I yeah, don't, I don't foresee a big pile forming. No, I mean, it, it's like just. In this area, I can understand, but in that area, it's yeah. minimal at best, but I understand. But yeah, I mean, if they, especially if they use that back of the building for snow store, for storage, yep. they might want to just push everything out of the way. And okay. I mean, I, it's kind of tough to get back there without something going down the hill. Yeah. And it's going to happen, I understand, but if we just. Yeah, it's, you have about 24 feet over there. It's only a one-way path, so there's always yeah. plenty of space in the pavement. Yeah. Okay. I don't foresee that being an issue. Right. Thank you. Does anybody else have any additional comments or concerns with this? Do 
anybody in the audience like to speak on this notice of intent? Second time, third and final time. Um, so it sounds like we, you would like to request a continuance to? Yeah, we'll, I guess we'll uh, request a continuance to, uh, just to notify those additional butters. Um, and it sounds like some members of the commission would like to just have a chance to get out there and just, just take a look at it. Um, and then if you can just notify those of butters this week, um, as Larry stated, then we can we can vote on it at the next meeting, just knowing that your bases are covered, our bases are covered. Um, and I, I think you'll be able to, I don't particularly have any um, any issues with this project. And the COC. And the COC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the COC <laughs> for the open order. So we'll leave the, the hearing open, um, and we'll see you on the 24th. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks. Uh, um, do we have a file number for that one? Yes, it is. Let me scroll up. DEP 1991111. Wow. Good one. There you go. Chris. <laughs> you got a good one. <laughs> I got the number, I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Short-sighted, sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks. All right, next hearing. Um, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, there will be a public hearing on a notice of intent for the maintenance and repair of an existing dam including tree and vegetation clearing and sediment removal in the riverfront area. Address is 122 Water Street, map 22, lot one. Uh, it's up to you. Sometimes it's a struggle with those ones. But it would be nice because then the camera have a better shot at it or shot at it. Associates uh, with me this evening is Bob Ruggles from uh, the Carriage. Uh, I want to make sure Derek Shipper from GZA, and then also Julian Reese from Bartlett Tree Experts. Um, so hopefully, get everything covered. So those are the questions that you may have. Perfect. Angela, go ahead. So the first notice that we're here for is work on or maintenance work and uh, cleanup. Of the dam, and so what I did is I brought an overall plan of the site. You know, this is probably I think our uh, six or so filing that we've had on the, the project site at Whitney Carriage Apartments. Um, and so these are really the last two items that we're trying to uh, have conversations with the commission tonight about in the uh, overall scheme of what they're trying to do, um, beautifying the site and cleaning up a lot of the site and expanding what they're trying to do on the property. Um, this item, like I said, is the dam repair. Uh, in maintenance and brook cleanup. And I have some pictures uh, that I could pass around if you want to take a look at real quick and we can pass them down um, of some of the area that we're looking at. Um, first item of note that we want to look at is the sluiceway. You can see on the first two pictures that we see there, there's a fair amount of debris uh, that travels down Manusnock Brook, basically collects all of uh, 
upstream area, and you'll see uh, a number of, uh, we've seen bikes in there, barrels, uh, you'll see in there there's a trash barrel, and there are a number of uh, balls that show up in this area to basically come down to the dam and uh, basically sit in this area here. And it shows uh, fairly well in the picture there. Um, right now there's a sluiceway in this location here that's uh, open, and it shows on the, the first picture um, the sluiceway is there. What happens is a lot of this debris gets uh, caught up in the sluiceway and then uh, blocks up the dam and the water level rises and then goes over the dam. Um, since uh, the new owners have bought the property about a year and a half ago now, Bob, is that correct? Two, two years ago. Yeah. Um, they've done some cleanup of just a little bit of debris here and there just to kind of keep the water moving through that sluiceway. Um, but really they need to get in there and, and be a little more aggressive with some of that cleanup because it's just it's petrol, petrol issues that they have. Um, we were talking about um, there's some looks like some two by fours or something like that, or maybe even bigger pieces of uh, wood in there um, that's kind of jammed into the sluiceway that seems to be picking up uh, some of that debris over time. And they want to get in there and clean up that. Um, but we really want to get in front of the commission to make sure we get permission to do that work uh, because it's uh, not just getting some of the down there with a you know it's picking up some of the debris. They want to get a. Uh, a track machine in, and there's an opening in the gate that they can kind of get the, the machine right into here and be able to reach over uh, into that sluiceway area to be able to clean that area up and, and really make it such that um, it's easier over time to allow the water to keep flowing through there, but also to keep maintaining that area. Um, like I said, they've done a good job uh, since they've taken ownership of the of the property of doing that. I think it was something actually the city used to maintain it and didn't really uh, kind of keep up with it. and so. Uh, they're kind of fighting a battle that happened over time. Um, a couple of other things that of note that they're trying to do here is that really the other biggest thing that they want to do right away um, that's really on their radar is removing the trees. Um, and we showed uh, a fair amount of trees located along the burn here of the dam and then also along the bay. Um, there's a report that GZA did, uh, just a preliminary report at this point of um, just looking at some of the issues that are occurring within that dam area and some of their recommendations. One of the recommendations was to clean up uh, or remove all the trees within 20 feet of that dam. And so I know in the in the notice I also have, and I think I handed it out to you guys, is a, a close-up of this uh, dam location here showing that 20-foot offset to the dam and also trying to show some of the trees uh, within, a, within that area that de need to be removed as part of the dam maintenance. And there are a couple of the trees that are outside of that 20-foot that really should be removed also. Um, and then also part of um, one of the recommendations was also to kind of look at um, some of the trees downstream that are also being affected by um, some of the damage that's done over time. And that's why, again, like we have uh, you know, the tree experts here also, that they went out there and flagged some of the trees that need to be removed on the property even further downstream, um, especially closer to even to the building there that you know, the root systems, I, I know they're dying, and some of them, are, I think, are just, uh, you know, need, need to remove before they start falling over and, and blocking the brook. Um, and that's part of, like I said, it's part of the, the brook uh, cleanup process that they have. Um, one of the other things, and it's not something that they want to do right now, but they want to get in there and be able to investigate how much sediment's been built over time. Again, like I said, there's been no maintenance done of the dam. Um, they don't want to remove the sediment at this point, but as they get more funding, they want to remove some of the sediment that has been building up. That's kind of causing some of the um, I would say structural uh, issues, but it, it's going to cause uh, issues over time if they don't remove some of that sediment there. They want to start getting some of that in there, some of that out of there over time. But what they want to do is be able to get in there and at least see how much sediment is in there. But again, we don't want to get in there and start investigating that until we have uh, you know, the commission sign off. And I know that was, um, Angel sent us a long list of questions of concerns, but that was one of the things that was like, do we get in there and answer your questions without having a permit, or do we come in for a permit and then really answer the questions as we move along in this? Because we want to have this as a permit that's in perpetuity of the project um, so they can keep maintaining the, the dam. And that was something that I know Andrew has more information, and we understood that, and that's something that you know, we want to come in front of the commission tonight and see what other questions you have so that we can kind of get that out the table so that if we have to bring other uh, information back at you to the next meeting, we can do that. So the, like I said, the pictures are there also. Um, I think some of the pictures show also the downstream side of the sluiceway area, and that was a couple of things that, um, as they get in there and start looking at um, the structure of the dam to see if any of the blocks need to be replaced. I, I know uh, Bob noticed one of the 
um, stones that were moved on the downside of the sluiceway that we were trying to figure out if that needs to be replaced or how that has to be done. But it was something that, like I said, without being able to get access down there, without even cleaning out, we don't know what else needs to be replaced as part of this. And it was something that, like I said, kind of needs to be ongoing that um, we thought that if, if the commission could issue an order and maybe, I don't know if it has to be every year or every time they do a major project that has to come back and report back to the commission such that they have that flexibility. Um, because like I said, it's, it's not a set and done, we're building a parking lot, it's done, uh, certificate compliance is issued. It's kind of a, a fluid uh, project that we're looking at here that's going to be in perpetuity of the, the ownership of the, these guys. And, you know, as you've seen, they've been putting money after money after money into the project. And this is one of the things that they want to make sure they clean up also um, as it is. Um, might miss out. Anything else you want to include under this? No, I'm just maintenance to, the, to the money side of thing here is that uh, we've got so many other pro projects going on with this property, as you guys well know. Um, you know, 1,380 windows get replaced or masonry cleaning started, no chemical, no eco clean. And uh, so there's uh, just a ton of other projects that we're doing. And this one, when we surveyed the, and hired Whitman and Bingham, we were kind of hoping that the dam belonged to somebody else. <laughs> and uh, the fact that, you know, it came back and, uh, you know, that it is on our property and our responsibility and that there's a ton of deferred maintenance to it, uh, we don't have the monies to come in and do a big project. I think that's the only thing I would call out that, you know, I would say that I didn't agree with is that we have any big projects at all plan for the dam other than uh, we might talk about lowering the spillway as a means to lowering the flood hazard. So uh, GZA can speak to that and that would be the largest project in some point in future. But right now the only monies that I have for it are to clean up the dam. Trees growing out of the dam in mortar joints as an architect, that's not a good thing. And uh, uh, Derek can tell you that's not a good thing, but that's the short of that. And then he's expanded a little bit into the foundations and the embankment area, but to Wes's point of coming in and just cleaning up so that we can see and continue to maintain it, first year monies are uh, you know clean and take away the trees that are really causing damage to the, so it, it is uh, a preservation project uh, and not an ambitious, you know, let's put hydro, there's, we looked even that we did once look at putting hydroelectric back on it, but the water flow has changed since the no no name reservoir was built. That uh, it'd be a very expensive high school science project, you know. But at least we looked at it and uh, we just couldn't make sense out of it. Otherwise, I think we we would like to do that. But now it's just preservation, take care of the trees around there, and then the ability to clean the sluice way is one of the biggest problems. There's all sorts of junk, and that, that will fill up quickly. And what it'll do is causes the water level to rise, and uh, you know that's a that's a danger to our, our our property. We just want to keep the water level as low as possible. And the, the there are two sluice ways. One of them is a trickle, and the other one's a big, you know, flows a lot. And that big one, um, you know, it fills up with everything you can imagine. You know. That flows. You can't imagine the things we pull out of there. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're, what we're doing is repeating the city's technique. You know, we just said who's taking care of it, and I think once we started asking questions about whose dam was it, was about the time that I think conservation commission said, well, don't, don't. The city shouldn't do it anymore because it's when you carriage property. But they packed a parked a rubber track backhoe onto there with a fairly short reach, it just reaches down in front of the sluice way up against the granite embankment. So we're not removing sediment material, we're not removing any of the, the brook bed or anything. It is just a matter of pulling trash that shouldn't be there. We pull it up and set it on the bank and then we carry it out by hand. So it's the least invasive process you can do, but it's also, you're not putting a person down in, in the stream flow. That could be very dangerous. So we're trying to maintain it while doing a safe approach. And that's what we're looking for is just uh, the ability to continue to do that. I guess I have one quick question. Is this, I mean, if you just find out you own this, I guess the answer would be no, but um, does the, I, this obviously doesn't have any kind of filing with um, dam safety. Does it require it? 
It's not a jurisdictional dam by okay. definition of the Ozark okay. Dam State Dam. Okay. Okay, do you want me to review the questions and the information I found out? Yeah, because I was going to say, I, I did take a look at the questions that you sent out yesterday. I saw that we had answers to some of them from the previous week, but if you could kind of just update everyone, I'd appreciate that. So when I got this project, I just took a training on dams that weekend. Um, I met with a couple other cities and towns, and I met a couple of other agents, some people from dam safety, some people from ecological restoration and DEP, um, we discussed this project in depth. Um, and my first question was, you know, there was no stamps, no stamp plans submitted, um, which I now have. So I'll, have I'll take some time to review those. Um, and then the biggest question was about the dam and the dredging and the sediment removal, because that does trigger other permits. And so if you don't know how much, you know, the, the NOI that was turned in does state that they want to do sediment removal. And then it refers to the GZA's report, which says they you know, suggested releasing sediment downstream. Both of these actions require different different permits and different permit evaluations. So, you know, Ms. West just stated that, you know, they were going to do something different. So I'm not sure what they're doing with this permit. Um, and I probably want that in writing at what the actual goals are of this permit and what they're going to be doing, a work plan, a phasing plan what type of erosion controls are going to be used, if it, is there going to be a drawdown, are they going to be blocking off the dam, will a copper dam be used, um, and then they refer to GZA for all the questions about um, where the long-term maintenance, I also asked about the long-term maintenance plan because um, after talking to the state they said basically any sort of work, if you know, repairing the sluice slay, the sediment removal should get a permit or should be arranged with the Conservation Commission so that they're not just going in by themselves because for removing sediment that's considered dredging and require a permit um, federally. And then going down farther, um, I did speak of fire prevention. Their only concern was that if that there was going to be a fire pit or a propane tank that they would want to work with the owner on it, which is not the case. That's the next, that's the next notice. Yes. They're all mixed in together. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I got it once. Um, can I, can we just stop on the, um, the sediment and all that because now I don't have monies to go in and to dredge and to do that. So the expectation is that um, we're, we're learning more about this as we hire the people to do that. And you're wanting the very long view of things. And I'd like to have that, but we just don't have it. You know, we're studying and we're learning. So by asking those questions, that's helping us sort of figure out what do we need to do, who do we need to hire, and how do we get these answers together. But I don't have the answers to that one. Derek is the professional on it, and the, the only thing that we've done, we've not studied sediment. We don't really want to replace the sluice way. What we have hired Derek to do is to model the impoundment lower. Is it the impoundment, or what do you call it? Yeah, well, we're looking at potentially lowering the spillway. We're looking at various depths and various widths so that the spillway could then be I'm sorry, the impoundment would be permanently lowered, um, probably to where it is now, roughly, because right, roughly it goes to the right sluice way now, unless it gets blocked up. Um, and when it does get blocked up, it comes up seven feet and goes over the primary spillway. So I think what we're looking at now is permanently blocking off the sluice way, and then what, putting a channel in at where the primary spillway is now. So the, the benefit to us on that was it, it relieves the burden or the sort of urgency to having to put a backhoe into the water and pull out and clean the sluice way. You no longer have to maintain the sluice way. This is the most conservative level. It also staves off risk to flood. Um, but it is a study that we've hired only for him to begin uh, the engineering, you know, volume and what impact, you, you know, what happens when you lower it a foot, what happens when you lower it three feet. What happens when you lower it six feet? So we are just in the very beginning of studying what that is. And then we'll come up with some answers of what we like. And then I expect what we'll do is we'll come back and say, now I think we know what we want to do. And then we can start talking about sediment, sediment downstream, and then what do you need? But those questions are a good heads up to the future. So can I just say one quick thing? I know you're. You're talking about a long-term plan, and right. you're not really sure what you, what you want to do. And Correct. I only have two more weeks on the commission. <laughs> so, like, if you're looking for us to yeah. vote on something yeah. next week, I, I don't feel comfortable with 
or maybe we're going to do this three years from now under the same plan. I'm prepared to vote on something before me, you know, like, you know, next week. But I don't want to vote on something that, you know, we might be doing long term because I'm not going to be here to see it through. It should really clued, be another commission. I clued you into what our grand plans are that some of the questions ask about. I would say yeah. that sediment removal is not in the scope of work. That's not what we're asking for. What we're asking for is approval to continue to do what we've done, is that when we see that there are problems that we can act on our own and go and pull the bicycles and the trash and the garbage and the dumpsters and construction cones and silt fences that are washed onto our property and to be able to you know, be responsible, take those out, unclog the clog, and then uh, relieve the dam of the trees and branches and things that are going up. So there's really two basic things that I'm asking for. And the other things are long viewed, long questions that are really coming up as a, as a response to, we're asking for routine maintenance, you're asking bigger questions of us. And we're, while there is a, we're trying to get to a bigger plan, we're not asking for that tonight. So, sorry, mm -hmm. and we, we might be on the same page here, I'm, not, okay, you first. I'm, I'm going to ask though because you uh, were able to do a much more thorough review. Um, my first question, all of the questions that you had written out um, were a direct result of what was in the submitted yes. application, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, my first thought is, I, one, I think it's wonderful that you guys want to do this. I've, I've been out there, I've seen the amount of stuff that comes down there, and I think that's great. Um, I, I think any one of us would, would be happy to see that continuously done. Um, however, for us to be able to vote on approval for you to go in and do the the, the tree removal and just the removal of that trash. Um, we, in, in my personal opinion, from my experience with, with this kind of stuff, is that when we vote on, or, on issuing an order of conditions, we're approving everything that's in the application that was submitted. So if we so, submit an updated there, if we could... And Angela, you can correct me on this, but I would say that if, if all you are looking for is approval for to be able to go in, maintain keeping the trash out, and getting rid of some of those trees that you feel are, are in the dam and could cause some issues, I personally would want an application that just states that. Um, because then if we voted on it, that's what we're voting on, is approving you to do the trash removal and to do the tree removal, and that's it. And then you can continue to have those ongoing conversations about what you want to do additionally. Um, Angela, you can feel free to jump in if you have a different opinion or... No, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, what I was just going to clarify is that in your application, you say you want to remove the sediment, you want to do all the things that GZA recommend, you want to do the tree removal. Um, I did meet with Julianne about the tree removal, and you guys also want to use herbicides, which kind of triggers a whole other mess of restrictions and uh, state and federal regulations. We can regulations. get to that in a minute. Um, but, uh, well, oh, okay. I, I just, I think that your response, your review of it was enlightening to us, you know, and that I would like to adjust the requirement to judge, or the, the request. Uh, so this is the back and forth. Okay? This is a big thing that I don't know a whole lot about, you know. And we're hiring experts to tell us that good dam maintenance involves all those things. However, we're not prepared to do all those things <laughs> just yet. And your questions are asking for the right long-term answers, but I think that there's short-term goals that I would like to then uh, adjust our request to basic maintenance of trees and cleaning the sluice way only and maybe we can take care of that at uh, the next you know this meeting or the next meeting i i understand we don't have a dep file number so you can't vote anyways tonight you know, they're kind of leaning on what you guys want to do is i have been in communication with them and they're very concerned as well um so <laughs> there's a lot of red flags you know because I, I, I hope people aren't that concerned. I hope people are happy about the projects we're undertaking and well, trying to be not, good stewards of our property. No, but it's not that they're not happy, it's that they're concerned because right. um, this application doesn't really 
meet, like you don't talk about your Army Corps, you don't talk about if you, meet, if you need federal permits, you don't discuss, you know, it's the options for 401. Exactly, there's a lot of missing information, you know, you didn't put anything about the trees, it's about the treatment chemicals. It's a great learning experience for yes. us to, you know, we're, we're just on the, the beginning, we're at the bottom of the mountain here, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, trying to tackle a big one here. But we're also trying to make it in bite-sized chunks, so I'm, we're looking for help, okay? So the commission can't really help you with that. Yeah. So, can I finish my sentence, please? <laughs> um, so, after looking at all this and all the things that are lacking and all the confusion um, between what you want to do and what you're applying for, I think you kind of need to go back, meet with your specialists, meet with your engineers, meet with everyone, figure out what you want to submit an NOI for, and then submit the NOI for that project sure. so we can review it. Um, you must, you know, it's most definitely up to you, but you know, I don't know if, are you going to know in the next two weeks and have, or we have enough time to review everything? Are you gonna be, I don't know if you guys, who is going to be handling it, are you guys going to be able to meet with well, it's not, know, the Army Corps you know, engineers? It has sat there for, you know, 120 years, and it's just that it's been neglected over I don't know who's ever done any kind of the work that we're talking about doing, but you can see it, and I can see, you know, that the, the sensitivity is that, you know, I'm a construction professional, and I can see, and I know that some of those things are not good practices. But that's kind of where it ends from an architectural standpoint. We fired our our dam expert, and he's told us that there's a number of things that you need should be doing. Okay, so that's this is all. You know, this is all things we're learning about, and um, what I would want to do, it seems to me that, that there is a minimum, and I can work with our dam expert to say the minimum that you would want to do right now is probably taking care of the trees and taking care of the sluice way, and then we adjust it, and then we get that back to you. Can we adjust in time to, what is That's the public, what's so that? We can update, the can public hearing is still going. Yeah, so you can just so really update it and yeah. resubmit it. Um, well, I don't think resubmitting, I think we just well, submitting submit additional so information. Yeah, yeah. resubmit yeah. additional information, yeah. you know. Yeah, because <clears throat> um, yeah, I think there's, yeah, I, yeah. I'll have to double check the state on that, just to make sure that you know, if you're changing the NOI, well, you know, if you're, you're going to be changing the NOI completely, basically, that you're going to be changing well, what you guys are asking for it to do. We're, we're change the, reducing the scope that we're asking. Yeah, they're reducing yeah. it. So, I mean, it'd be like, we're, we're not asking for the same where I'm going to put one. It doesn't. Yeah, we're, at, we're, not, we're not asking for worse than we've already submitted for. That would be good, but I'd also like to take more time than as appropriate and as guided by staff also that, you know, there will be a bigger plan, so in a way this is an introduction to the big idea, but there's immediate concerns that we'd like to do. So we'll update with the immediate concerns, and then uh, we'll just keep chipping away at uh, the, bigger, the, the bigger mission here, which to me is lower the impoundment so that the floodplain isn't impacting lower levels of building seven and building five. As in, in my, I'm sorry, in my experience, um, no, you're right, if you, as soon as you start touching the sediment, it opens all the permits, 401 and SDP and everything. Uh, but I think with, whereas you have a modified request here to take the trees down and then just get in there occasionally with a backhoe, in my experience, I've seen a lot of conservation commissions you know, issue an RDA or something like this, would uh, somebody somebody consider? Depends on how much you're removing, and you know how far down is the sluice way from last my last conversation with somebody was that was possibly four feet under sediment. You know, it's it was just it's just awful. trash debris, there's no sediment disturbance, and then it'd just be tree cutting, which I've seen RDAs issued many times for that. Um, I would recommend an NOI for it since you already have it, unless you're going to withdraw this NOI and then apply for an RDA and possibly have the risk of the commission voting for a positive determination to come back and apply again. Because if you're, if I'm understanding correctly, you guys are just going to be resubmitting what you guys want to do with all the correct information. But I think that they're going to take sediment off the table at this time, so it almost changes it really to where a case where an RDA I think should be considered. And yeah, that's what's definitely your option to you know, propose an RDA, but the commission, yeah. the, there is a risk that the commission will vote as a positive or that the state will return it after the commission. Well, and then are there new notification requirements and new dates that we've already gone beyond? I mean, It'd be nice if we can get something done this month within practicality, and uh, if it's a matter of just updating the narrative, like Wes said, and just staying the course with you know limiting the NOI, uh, and then we'll we'll take on the bigger issues when we have more information we've studied and we've heard your input, okay, 
and I, it wasn't until we made application that we could even have that sort of level of uh, review. So we've learned a lot from that, and uh, we're just going to scale back our request, and then we'll keep working on it. Can I just? So it sounds like you know a, a good thing to include would just be sort of a best management, like if you're going to remove trees, sort of say, hey, when we remove the trees, we're, this is how we're going to do it. Just a, right. like a, a paragraph or a few bullets, a narrative, like we're going to, boy, you know, whatever. We're not going to stump. We're going to. You reach in with whenever possible with a you know, whatever you know, and for trash removal, you know we drive a the excavator to the end, we scoop it up and we put you know like whatever it is you're gonna do, just explain what it is you're gonna do. Sure. And that way, when you're doing it, if if there's a question, it's it's written down somewhere, okay. and you can say no, this is what we have approval to do, and I mean you know, and that way you're not it's not anything complicated, and it's based on if you it sounds like we could be able to vote on this next week. Because if you had to reapply, if you did even an RDA, you know, you're looking at we may not even have a commission next next. You know, well, I brought month. these guys along to answer some of those questions about how do you? I, yeah, the trees I could speak. I could speak a little bit to the tree removal since yeah. we're here. Um, so our plan is is to actually use a crane to assist with removing many of the trees because it's a it's a really difficult location yeah. to work on. And to do that um, from from a safety standpoint, because we're really going to be perched right on the edge of some pretty steep bankments, um, so you know we have we have to put our own personal safety as foremost, and then you know the safety of the environment, the ecological, you know, the stream, um, you know. So we we don't plan to bring any heavy equipment any further than like the side of the building where there's, where I think you're referring to, like there's a fence. Um, so, so that would be like the extent of, you know, there's a lawn area there yeah. that we would bring the equipment to or working from a parking lot on the other side. Yeah. And so we would be basically by foot climbing down into the ravine and making the cuts that we need to, um, you know, being conscious about, um, you know, when we fuel up, we wouldn't be fueling up within that ravine. We would be fueling up, up on the parking lot, you know, you know, taking into consideration things like that, um, using like a bio blend uh, type of bar oil in the chainsaws, just so, because chainsaws, the, the, the chains actually spin out a little bit of oil. Um, so it's like a vegetable based like bar oil we use just some other precautions to try to minimize our impact Your suggestion um, is to describe all this. Yeah, no way right. and the, the, the one thing I have a question about is you know some of the far bankmen You know the way I looked at it is dropping some of the trees kind of like onto some of this sediment and in, in rocky areas and then pulling them out because they're actually out of reach of the crane so um, that was like the only practical way of, of doing that, so. Would that cause any structural damage to the dam? Typically not. Well, not onto the dam. But like onto the rockways on the lower side where the flow goes? In the brook, right, the brook okay. stream more yeah. Right, right. Okay. Like on the, on, the brook, on the lower side, there's like kind of like this big ledge, I don't, I don't know how to yep. describe it, yeah. um, in the middle of the river. Um, and so like dropping some trees like onto that and then picking them up just because well I don't, I don't know that they make a crane large enough I mean they, they probably do but you, I think you would cause damage to the site trying to get in there so um, you know we want to work like lightly with the equipment we have I mean you're, in my opinion you're the expert I mean if you tell me that that's how you have to do it and, and you're using a crane, I'm not gonna tell you you have to go and get a crane twice the size. Right. We're just kind of looking for like a best practice, like all the things you just said. So write it up. Yeah, if we get like okay. a brief narrative, this, we wanna do tree removal, this is, you know, we have the map already, and this is how we intend to do it. I can put that together. And that's really all, personally, that's all I would need to see. I'm not looking for. And if you have um, any sort of specs on that oil that you use on the chainsaw, mm -hmm. it would be good just for us to have that as part of the application and part of the file, just to show that it's not going to cause any issues. Right. 
And one of my main concerns that I, that I brought up with um, with Bob and, and Angela is, you know, some of these species like the maples, poplars, black locusts, they, they re-sprout very vigorously. And so I had, I had made the recommendation to actually do a, a herbicide onto the stump itself um, using like a paintbrush type technique and using a product that's registered for wetlands and aquatic areas. Um, not that we would be applying it to those areas, but we would be applying it to the stump itself when it's freshly cut. Um, and I did, I did send that information for review. Um, some comments on that. So I am still working at the state to kind of research the ability to do that, as well as <clears throat> there was a couple questions like, all right, you know, because obviously you, you're obviously licensed for herbicide application, your waterways, and you have a license, but through MDAR, correct? Yes. Okay, so I know for like residential, you don't need a license, but for commercial usage, you do. So, for example, I could apply on my own property. I could have you come and apply on my own property, but correct. You can't We're, do it for Bob. It's we are com yeah. licensed commercial applicators. Okay. Um, and then this, um, myself and the Judy, who's reviewing this project, we are trying to get in contact with a gentleman in Boston from the Waterways Division who kind of specializes in herbicide who are kind of waiting on his referral if this can be used there, if there's a risk, if it rains, if it's actually going to affect the waterways. Um, there is some concern about like, how close are these trees and we, are, there's, we don't have a plan that shows like what trees are going to be taken down um, or like the number of trees or where the limit. Is that true, Wes? I thought we did indicate what trees are coming down. It is everything within the 20 feet, right? Everything, yeah, within the 20 feet, but there's no count, like, how exactly are... I, I, I see there's a couple. There, okay, okay. Like, I see some trees here, but it was, like, all of them, or... I think there's a couple more that they had flagged that we want to yeah. add to the list, too, because... And, like, that's proximate to the waterway, because if we do get a flood, if the water levels do rise and they do come up to the base of those trees for whatever freak reason or after you apply it, is there a risk that that treatment's going to affect the waterway downstream? Um... I don't think so because the one you sent me is an algicide that's used, I think we just um, permitted it for use on Day Street, the Day Street Pond. But um, I did want, myself and Judy did want to connect with the gentleman in Boston just to make sure that there wasn't any sort of issues or anything else that you guys need to do. Okay. So I'm still waiting for a call back. Thank you. So these trees are growing in the brook itself? Is oh. this actually in the? The banking. They're in the middle of the system. dam, some of them. Yeah. There's, uh, I'm just trying to... Yeah, some of the, it's really the embankments and the, so, the sluice way. Oh. Yeah, the, the sediment has really built up to the primary spillway crest. Mm -hmm. But now that the water has been essentially permanently, okay. permanently lowered to the sluice way, that soil's not exposed and, and trees have fallen on top of that. So there's sediment, especially right here now. There's a little bit of a leaf. So what I did is just drew the... What's your name? Larry. Larry. The, um, I'm just going to color it in a little bit here. Okay. So there's, um, since lowering the sluice weight, you know, the bank sort of exposes itself, and then right along the edge, this is the dam, um, and there's a little bit of a trickle of the sluice weight. We don't know how it gets out there, but you can walk all the way. I mean, be careful. There's holes, so if you try it, be very careful because there are like sinkholes out there, but you can walk safely in and around here, and none of that sediment, according to Derek, should be there. So in the long view of it, you know, that, if maintained properly, it's not there. We don't have any interest in pulling that out, nor do I have monies to do that right now. Uh, with the proper operation of the property and time, we'll get there, but, um, there's trees growing in and out of here that are expanding and the tree roots are putting additional pressure. The easiest thing to do is to come and take those trees out and slow it down and start to reverse the degradation of it. So the first simple steps are cleaning it out and taking the trees out. But you're not taking out any of the sediment? Not taking any of the sediment. So what we're gonna do is rewrite our narrative and adjust our request. And these questions are excellent, Angela, to, you know, to start, the, I think the NOI probably starts this level review and gets you to ask the questions. And then, um, you know, that feedback is, we're learning here, you know? Are there any other questions? 
So every tree that will be taken is flagged. Is it they everyone? Are. I do have I have flags on on everyone. Some of them have flags. Some of them have been spray painted. Um, everything within twenty foot of that of that um, structure yeah. is is definitely twenty feet both ways. Yes. Yes. And there was some talk about more than twenty feet downstream. Yes. I had marked other trees that I had made recommendations to be removed either because they were um, hazardous to the property itself, um, either in decline or poor structure. There were some kind of along the building, in between the building and the, in the stream, um, where I thought there would be an issue with um, into the structure of the building. And, um, and there were some on the other side of the parking lot that were... So there's decline. a second request um, that we have. Is that an NOI2, the second one? Yes. And that gets into what we call amenities. Uh, so one is, the first one is about the dam upkeep and maintenance. And the second um, request is um, amenities in nature. And that's kind of the trees further than... So in the first request, no, it, it's not trees further than 20 feet away. That's a part of the second request. There will be a couple that are still further than 20 feet away from the dam, the concrete dam structure itself, but are still part of the brook. I think part of the issue that they're along the brook that need to be taken down. There. And that's why it, it, it says dam removal, but also brook removal. And that's what I know Angela said that we want a total number of trees Right. On, the new, on the narrative, I'll make sure there's a total number of trees yeah. there. And if I don't show Where them I on there, we'll kind of... Me and Julia, so we have an idea, so I, you know... Yeah. And I know the, some of the flagging like has kind of faded, so I know you had a color right. flags flag there, there when they were first done. Yeah, there was an issue in that, because when we originally assessed this was almost a year ago, yeah. and so a lot of, some of the flagging has come off, so that's why I ended up switching to, to spray painting some of the trees, but it's kind of a mix of flagging and spray paint. Um, I'm happy to meet with anybody if interested. I mean, I'm, but I will also work on on you know solidifying that that number and and a uh, you know a statement of of how we're going to do this work. I don't need an exact number. Just so you know, if the number is going to be excessively more than twenty, all of a sudden we come out there and there's forty trees down. We should at least know how many to take out so we can kind of keep track of the alteration to the riverfront area. And that's just really beyond the 20 foot. So we obviously want to keep the 20 foot clear of the dam. But I said, it's just like beyond it. We just want to make sure we're keeping track of what's happening. It's a great time to look at okay. it without the foliage, and we can get the counts done. Yeah, so if you want to, if the person wants to, I can go out with Julian and work on that. Yep, or if anybody sure. else wants to, wants to go, just let. Um, if you've not been out there, I would recommend it, especially with all this other work yeah. that they're doing. Um, it is worth just just going out and just seeing it um, firsthand. So if you are interested, um, please let Angela know. Do you, sorry, do you want me to schedule a meeting with Julian to discuss the trees, or do you guys want me to handle the trees with Julian and then schedule a meeting with Wes um, to assess the whole project, or do you just want to go on your own? I don't know, or just with me. Myself. So I'm just going to stop out there this weekend, take a look. I definitely can't do it during the week. <laughs> when you walk with Julian, I can, if he's doing it during the week, I can okay. make do you, the week. do you want to schedule that now? or? We can, we can email. Right. It's okay. going to make me later then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, does anybody else have any, on the commission, have any particular comments? Um, Angela, do you yes. have finished going? I'm set. Oh, yeah. I just want to make sure I address everything. Yes, no, I apologize. I know there no, was more, okay. there was more questions lot. that we just want to. Um, and then I made a comment about the, you know, the historical commission had been involved just because the site is historical, as you know. <laughs> I'm sure you worked with them before. I just want to make sure that they don't have any sort of quip or concern about the dam because well, I don't know if they do. Like all things Whitney Carrick, of course. That's why I'm, like, I'm, I have a feeling they might have you know, some concerns. I just want to make sure of that. It is a contributing structure. On the, It is a national registered property. Okay. We are seeking uh, tax credits. Okay. And uh, we may be eligible to apply what monies, but we have other 
higher, you know, it's an occupied property. No, so we're prioritizing as much as we can. We're trying to stretch dollars as much. Every money that we is lent to us, every penny goes into the property. I guarantee you that. Yeah. Plus, we and we try to stretch it as far as possible, right? Our dollars. <laughs> so um, I just want to say it is a contributing structure. I have notified Quinn Stewart, our with VHB, our kind of historic consultant, and she has confirmed it's number thirteen on a lucky number 13 on the register and uh, she has said that it's okay to speak about modifications to historic structures and still retain it as a contributing there's a way that we're going to have to do it it's a separate process that doesn't involve this board the answer is yes and yes we're working on it we're aware of it i just wanted to make sure just because i know i actually met with the historical commission a few weeks ago and they're very involved in the community so i just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that right instead of having them come down in the middle of the day and go, what's going on? Right. Um, and then just the phasing plan, which we don't need, since we're doing sediment removal for that. Um, and so I know you guys didn't work with the Office of Dam Safety, but I did call them and just discuss the dam and discuss you know, some of my concerns and kind of go over the permit with them. And they were very, very nice. And they did offer, if you guys, you know, they were like, oh, we can help them with this. Like, we can oh. show it, like, we can give them advice. And, you know, they, they offered, even though it's not a qualifying dam, um, because, you know, they're like, technically it's not jurisdictional, but they'll most definitely work with people and they'll most definitely offer advice. And um, they were really resourceful for me when I was going through the when I was going through the Well, I would project. like to hear what they think about it and what yeah. they think and they're, they and they're very, very nice. Um, my second favorite office from the state. If you can there. pass on the contact there, I would, I would definitely I just follow. called the main line online. Actually, it was a live person that answered. Um, okay. I can help you with that. Yeah, okay, we work closely with them, and they're in fact a client of ours too. So. Yeah, it, it was it was very informative and it was very helpful, and they had a lot of stuff that they supplied me with. Um, so I just wanted to recommend that to you. I hope that's not a concern anymore. Tree removal, and that is all. Sorry. <laughs> just one quick thing, okay. Okay. Yeah. she's yeah. chewing on. Yeah. On, on tree removal, I've seen it a few times yeah. where yeah. people. Like, you come in and you say, oh, I, and I, I'm not an advocate for tree removal, I, you know, but, um, so, but with that said, this time, sometimes people will try to be too cautious and say, oh, we're going to draw a line at 20 feet, and then that tree that's at 21 feet later becomes an issue, and then it has to be removed, because it's like, so just, if there's a tree that's at 22 feet, mm -hmm. like, just, and, and it needs to go, just identify it ahead of time, mm -hmm. you know, like. And like, that's what I did, I, I really went from, you know, the bridge you know, to the um, almost the corner of the building and, and try to anticipate, you know, what is everything that should be done, you know, so that so that really the process only has to be done once um, and we don't have to worry about going back in there in, in any kind of future large, you know, maintenance project. Um, and that, that was really the real reason why I had um, brought up the use of using like a, a stump application of herbicide is to just you know reduce the need of having to bring equipment in having to bring people in there running equipment um, chainsaws and so yes I agree with you to you know try to anticipate future problems as well I'm all set all right, so um, it sounds like um, one would like to, did, did, do you yeah, want to continue yeah, to the next to, hearing? You, I mean, a week or two weeks. I know Larry said a week, a week. Two, two weeks. weeks. Okay. March 24th. Um, and for that, we'll just be sizing down the, the scope, of the scope yeah. um, and resubmitting all of that to, uh, to our agent. Um, and just trying to be as, as clear as possible about the way that you're going to do each of those things. Um, it just uh, helps us, it helps you, it saves time so that we're not asking the same questions over and over again. Um, and we'll look to, at least for Angela, to have a, a, a site walk just to take a look at the trees and if anybody on the commission would like to, to attend that as well. Um, other than that, if we're good to hear, would anybody else in the audience like to speak on this project? Second time, third and final time. 
Great, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and continue that to the March 24th meeting. And if you have any other questions, you can ask Angela. All right. And the next one is, you guys too? Okay, all right. So we'll uh, open the next meeting. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, there will be a public hearing on a notice of intent for the construction of a pool patio and a river walk area, as well as landscaping, repairs to a concrete bridge, and moving of an entrance gate in the riverfront area and the floodplain. Address is 122 Water Street, Map 22, Lot 1. Okay. Um, so this project, and, I, and under the description, I kind of listed six, six different uh, sections or six different small projects that we call our site beautification or amenities um, as we kind of said they've been improving the site and part of this is to add uh, amenities for the, the residents of the property and so i'll go down the list and kind of show you on the master plan where these amenities or improvements are, are proposed and so the first one would be uh, the outdoor patio area uh, viewing and slash uh, i guess barbecue area uh, adjacent to the pool area what we're looking at is 1,485 square feet of decomposed granite to be located here. And so I have a picture of the area. Um, as you can see, there's a couple smaller, uh, very um, young trees out there that need to be removed. But the rest of it's just uh, forest litter that's underneath that area. And then there's the fence area that uh, is adjacent to the pool here that I was showing. So we'll end up putting a break into that uh, stockade fence here putting a staircase in from the pool area so people can walk up to the, the uh, patio area, but also this would be flush with a parking lot such that they'll have handicapped access from the parking lot. Okay, uh, so it's on it's on the opposite side of the river from where like the um, the playground and stuff is? Yeah, it's so not, the playground is It's way not over, back in that well, area, well, the right? The playground's over okay. here. So yeah, if you're familiar with the site where the pool area is, the pool area is kind of sunken down. Uh, the, the greater the parking lot sinks down and the uh, pool area sits down, I, know, I want to say uh, four or five feet or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that actually it may be a little higher than that. And then, so what we're looking to do is make this uh, patio area basically flush the, similar to what the grade is now. But we have to adjust it a, a few inches to make sure that the uh, handicap access is allowed from the parking lot here so that we'll come into that patio area. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at, like I said, it's a decomposed granite. Uh, we'll adjust the, there's a fence now uh, in the location here, uh, and I know I show the eight up by eleven shows a blow up of that uh, of this area, so it shows a little more uh, detail to it. But the fence here uh, is located in this area. We're looking to expand the fence and do this fall protection uh, around that whole area. We will put a man gate in there that we walked, such that uh, it leaves similar to what's there currently, so that they can get around this area if they ever need to maintain it. But that would be locked, and so you know, from a safety standpoint, um, so that nobody's uh, opening it and no children going out and falling down the banking, but uh, that's the uh, that's that's that patio uh, barbecue area there. Like I said, if you look at the existing um, area there, it looks like it was disturbed probably with the construction of the parking lot and the pool area, so there's really not a lot of uh, uh, significant growth in that area, so I think there's a couple small trees that need to be removed, and then we would do a very minimal amount of um, earth removal uh, to get the grade to work, and then bring in the decomposed, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, decomposed grade. In that location, I do show road control barriers around the limits of the work, such that everything's retained there. And all we're looking to do is kind of keep everything on top of that that steep bank in there. I don't know if you're, anybody's been kind of out in that little corner there, but it's a fairly good drop once you get a little further past where we're looking to do the work there. So uh, that's item number one. Item number two has to do with the uh, concrete bridge mm -hmm. that we get over to that playground area that you were talking about. Uh, and again, I have pictures of. Uh, so I just took pictures of the side of it, but I also took pictures of, you can kind of see the, uh, the top uh, of the abutments, and the, really the top of the abutments are kind of degrading away with the fences tied in. And so what we're looking to do is um, repair and resurface the concrete bridge. What they'll do is they'll put um, four eye bolts into the side, and that's why I kind of showed you one side of the bridge. They'll put two, si two eye bolts on each side of the bridge. Um, such that they could hang a tarp underneath the bridge to catch any debris that may fall uh, down from any other construction that's going on there so that we protect the, the stream that runs underneath that bridge. But the intent, like I said, you can kind of see that just needs to be repaired. Um, it's not a, a large project, but it's just something that needs to be done uh, that really hasn't been touched up for probably since the, uh, 
project was originally was like 87, is that correct, Bob? Right, is that when the apartment complex was put in there? So that bridge is probably that, has that been upgraded since predates that construction complex. Complex. I'm guessing that's yeah. 1910 or 20 or something or before. So you can see it's in it's in need of some repair there. So that's again the second item that's uh, on the list. Number three had to do with some of the removal of the existing fence and replacement of the existing fence. Uh, and this is, we're looking at this corner here. And so right now there's a fence that runs uh, parallel with Whitney Street. And so what we're looking to do is replace that and actually in this corner here, make it more parallel with the, the building and not parallel with Whitney Street. We'll leave a little more green space between the fence there so that we can uh, provide some landscaping in that area. And really the intent there is when you're driving uh, up Whitney Street and coming into the projects, there's really no um, good visual barrier, really no pleasant view as you come up to that area. It's something that, again, hasn't been really updated. And so as part of their beautification of the site, they want to replace the fence in this area here and then add some uh, small landscaping. Also, the, as part of this, there's a there's a gate that sits right at the edge of uh, the property line, and they want to push it back a little further so that you'll be able to pull off a Whitney Street safely and be able to open the gate and not have to sit there on Whitney Street, which is every day becoming a little more busier. So that from a safety standpoint, they just want to push that gate further back. Um, and so uh, just so you can see is the purple uh, represents the floodplain. The blue here is the Newstock Brook, and it's the 100-foot and the 200-foot repairing zone. So this work will be in the 100 foot 200 foot repairing zone, this work would be in the 100 foot repairing zone. And then the, obviously the, the bridges across the brook. Uh, number four has to do with this little corner here. There's 383 square feet of pavement that uh, is being proposed to be removed. And they want to just remove that and put a little more green area there, a couple uh, shrubs. Again, same thing when you come in through the project, they kind of want to just add a little more green space to that parking lot that sits over there. It's just a, uh, see a pavement on the other side of the uh, sites. There's also some chain link fence that runs along Whitney Street and Water Street. And so the proposal is to remove uh, the chain link fence over here and to remove the chain link fence here and replace the chain link fence here with a split rail uh, fence. Again, just something a little more pleasing to the, to the eye uh, so that you're not looking at uh, that, I guess, uh, industrial looking chain link fence that they're there now, more of a, a pleasing aesthetic uh, look to that parking lot. And then the last thing has to do with the, the river walk that's being proposed uh, along the parking lot on the other side of the street. And so we're proposing a five foot wide decomposed uh, granite uh, river walk that will end uh, right at the end of the parking. We do show one section here. Uh, there's a low point in the parking lot where uh, the stormwater, when it collects, will t uh, run off into the stream. Um, and so because we have that uh, really concentrated flow in that location there, we are proposing a uh, grass crate pervious uh, river walk just in that location there, just to add a little more structure to it instead of using the um, de decomposed granite. We didn't want the granite, uh, decomposed granite to be running off into the stream in that location, so we want to use the uh, plastic um, grass crate there instead with a little more structure to it so it doesn't get uh, damage when the runoff goes over it, uh, but still be an impervious uh, surface there. We aren't proposing to change any of the grade of this area. We're looking to just basically remove uh, up to the depth of the decomposed uh, granite and just keep the similar grade because, as I said, the purple is the floodplain. And so we're not looking to do any uh, change of the grade. And same thing with the, the little parking uh, pavement area that we removed here in landscape. We're not looking to change grade. We'll just remove the pavement, just uh, replace it the same elevation. And the same with the river walk there. Uh, you, can, you can walk it now, but it's... Uh, it's really just exposed to earth right this second. And so we're, it's really, uh, we see it as an improvement that will actually add an, an amenity for the, the uh, residents here and for maybe at a future date, maybe be tied into something that maybe the city would do at a later date. Uh, but just kind of add um, where, where the applicants are trying to really uh, beautify the brook and make it an attraction for the, uh, the residents here to kind of add that and a nice little river walk for the residents. Uh, and so those are the the items that we have listed under our, like I said, the beautification and amenities uh, section of our notice, and uh, like I said, trying to make the, the site a little more attractive. Do we have any questions? Um, 
if it's okay, I mean, I, I, I'd like to take a look at that. I know there are a lot of minor things, but just I'd like to take a look at the site before I would go. And, 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 that's, and, and, that, and that's what I know, like, even I know when Angela and I, and, and uh, we don't walk the property for any of the commissioner was working with that time, too. I know he's going to go this weekend, but um, like I said, if you look over here now, it's actually a good time to see it. It's, it's really bare out there. There's not a lot of growth coming up, so it should be relatively you know, easy to get in and around there. So. I mean, with the, as close as the site is to the resource area, I think, I mean, all these improvements, they beautify the city, and they they don't have a, from what I can tell, they don't have any kind of impact on, on the resource area. So I think it's, personally, I think it's a win-win. So and that's why the applicant was choosing the, the surface type for the patio area and the walkways. They want yeah. to still make it a pervious walkway, but still be able to make it strong enough for it to stay and, and last for a, a fair amount of time. There, so. Um, do you have, will there be any new maintenance for the river walk, like cutting or any sort of treatment? Uh, I'm not sure about treatment necessarily. Um, I know it was something that uh, we had talked about. They would key the, the granite into the earth, so was, if they saw there would be uh, any erosion issues that would arise, if they would need to put some kind of edging on it, they would need to put in some kind of edging later on. But the intent there is to kind of key everything into just the land now um, and not put any other uh, border to it necessarily. They want to allow the water to run across it and, and, and through it. So. Will it connect? I know you, um, in the past, you told me you had problems with some of the abutting properties. Is it going to connect through the other yeah. abutting properties, or is it going to stop in It's, it's going to stop in their property. And so that, that fence that was approved before That's was still... Block it. Okay, I just wanted to Correct, sure. it still separate the two properties. Okay. Um, so the building that limits um, the ability for it to connect. Uh, right. You know, this at least puts one portion of it in and sort of looks to your downtown project and uh, you know does this for the residents primarily but in the spirit of what's happened in the downtown area of the walkway and the education and being able to uh, appreciate the, the resource uh, but uh, you know so I have stood there and looked upstream to see what could be done and uh, it would be a challenge and we do have a challenge with the neighbors uh, you know that it's not you know, the group of people coming over from the clinic and uh, are not there for the reasons to look at the resource, okay? So we would fence that off until anybody else had a better idea about that property. We don't own it, so we can't control it, but at least we've done our part. I understand, but I just wanted to, I was just curious, because I know the city, the city is proposing possible work. Farther down, I wasn't sure if it was like a, you know, I was just concerned about the issues that we discussed in the past. But if you have the misfortune of having a park way back there, at least you have a nice, you can walk your back to walk to right here in your park. Misfortune. Well, it's, it's good to walk, Larry. <laughs> Some people might purposely park on the back of the water. So the fence and all, you know, as you can kind of see as these last amenity projects coming up that, you know, a month over a month or now over a year, more than a year's time that we've been in front of you guys asking for this. You can see it all adding up to a better, you know, it's really polishing the apple and trying to take advantage of the great natural resources that are here. So these are the, um, you know, kind of the spotlight projects now. The fun projects. Does anybody have any concerns or additional questions? Um, is anybody else in agreement that you would want to see the site before being able to vote on it just to get? Just we don't have a DEP number anyways. Yeah, okay. Um, they say that on the website it says the fee hasn't been cleared though. Yeah, they're really. Okay. This one's like four weeks now. Okay, okay. must have check on I would check on the check and make sure that they actually yeah, got it. Make sure I didn't double cash it again. <laughs> but, no, I made sure. No, we made sure it gets sent to the. Donna's not here this week, so that's why I asked. Um, Angela, do you have anything additional? Yep, I'll set up. I'll work on today at the site visits, um, and then when we get the DEB comments, we can try to address them for the next meeting. Okay. All right. So the applicant would like to request a continuance yeah, to, to the 24th, March twenty fourth meeting. Okay. Thank you guys.
Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Thank appreciate you. it. You are here for the next two weeks, and then yeah, a few yeah. people turn right. up. Perfect. Well, I appreciate your your help here and watching our project here. Ms. Chairwoman? Yes. Um, can I make a suggestion that we move the COCs for 93 and 103 Kingland as the next one? Yeah, it wasn't the best. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you said that at home. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, so that was our final hearing of the night. Um, we're going to jump to our certificates of compliance for uh, 103 Keeneland Circle, file number 199989, and 93 Keeneland Circle, file number 199993. So these are older family members. Um, for those who don't know, this is Brian Carlson from Traditional Concepts. Um, he built the he built a lot of the houses um, in the Samus Lake, not Lake Samus, sorry, Samus area. Uh, oh, Castleland area? Yes, it wasn't specifically yeah, Castle, like, it was in right. that area, yeah. yeah. Um, and so he's coming back, he's closing out the old permits, um, trying to clear up the titles and the deeds I've been working mm -hmm. on. This is probably the fifth one since I've started. What's your problem? Um, but, you know, so he's working on them slowly, it's a lot of work obviously getting permission from the new owners and getting as built and working with engineers and working with me because I'm a pain. Um, <laughs> but I did meet with Brian uh, at both the sites. I measured out the houses were built exactly as the plans. Um, there was a French drain added to one, but it goes to the front yard. Mm -hmm. The foundation drains are in the places that they need to be. Um, one of the houses looks like it was moved up about seven feet closer to the road, farther away from the resource area, which is a win. There are wetland um, delineation circles in the back. Um, the erosion controls are still there, but also they've grown into the embankment because everything's regrown, everything's healthy and stabilized. Um, so it's my recommendation that the commission issue um, a COC for DEP file number 199-989 and another COC for DEP file number 199-993. Questions, concerns? Anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, issue certificates of compliance for DP file numbers 199-989 and 199-993. Second that motion. Second. All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> All right. Thanks. Are you in for <laughs> Thank that, you. I'm happy to be working with you. Um, probably, when can I pick them up? Um, do you want me to mail them to you? I can shoot you an email. Yeah. Okay, I'll shoot you an email once I'm done scanning them in, okay? okay Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the order. All right, um, we will jump back to new business. Um, reviewing new forms and policies to be ex accepted, the admin approval form that we spoke about last time. So I did some further research into it. I spoke to um, one of my friends who's an agent in a different town about it because they, they do use it still, um, but they actually kind of a slot in the hand from lawyers because technically the agent can't make jurisdictional. I'm not allowed to issue permits. It has to go to the commission. Um, they, the commission. Their commission still chooses to use it because it does create like a tracking system of what's going on for each property so someone can't really say oh well so and so said that I could put a fence here um, so I wanted to make sure I brought that concern up to the commission because I obviously don't want to cross the lines or make anyone feel uncomfortable um, I can also go the route of just writing putting everything in writing you know sending an email printing out adding it to the file I just liked having the form where I could check off the boxes and have you know if anything extends on it, it does have that little blurb at the end that you will be held to the accountable to the law. Um, so I was going to leave it up to the commission fully, uh, but I didn't want to leave that out. Um, is that something that we could, because I, I really like the idea of that. I agree. I, I like having that track record of, um, you know, because I know you get a lot of phone calls and things from, from homeowners that are really just trying to do something very simple. 
Um, and so I think it's I think it's really nice to have uh, that form just so that you know they're covered as well. Um, but if we were worried about um, you know, or if you were worried about anything sort of uh, coming back regulation wise, is it would it be too much for us to have to vote on those or? I don't, we can't, like, vote on them because it's not a part of the Wetland Protection yeah. Act. Yeah. It'd be a policy. Um, so I know, for example, what Newton does is that at the end of the year, you know, they're in the files, so the commission can view them any time. At the end of the year, she, you know, put, she uploads them online, but she also says to the commission, oh, I did this many admin forms. And the commission can always look at them and say, oh, wait a second, this shouldn't have been that. Um, I could also, I think about my pretty by the book. <laughs> so it's, but it's up to you guys. Uh, it really is up to you guys. It really does only list the exemptions as the options. Um, or it lists, you know, yes, you already have an open order of conditions on here. That's not how fun. Well, I mean, we're not imposing any restrictions above and beyond the Wetlands Protection Act. Exactly. Mm -mm. We're basically just telling, it's basically just a form that helps track what they're doing and telling them, like, yes, they spoke with the, they yeah. spoke with the conservation agent and the work they're doing is allowed without a permit. Yeah. That's, that's from, from my experience, um, in, in seeing them when I've been in front of other commissions, that, that's really what it yeah. is, is it's just saying, Yes, the work you're doing is allowed. You don't need a permit. Yeah. It's and, an well, easy right. way to track it. And while it's true that you know the commission has to vote on it's the commission's decision, not the agent. The agent is representing the commission yeah. every day while we're doing our jobs. Like you are the one, you know, representing the commission. Front so you know your 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 position has to be respected. If if you can evaluate a situation and you can determine. You know, would that be a case? I, I mean, yeah, otherwise if you, you shouldn't be here. And you obviously are competent <laughs> in your job, so I, I don't see a problem with the process. And if a lawyer has a problem with it, they can, yeah. you know. Or, you know, the, sorry, I didn't mean to no, I, you, Larry. I, um, you, even if it, I mean, it can be something as simple as, as if you come across something that, like, you really think that, like it's fine, but you feel like there could be a question. We can just put admin approvals as as something on the agenda for you to just say, "Hey, this project came across my desk. I think that we can just give them. I think that it's fine. What do you guys think? Um, if if you felt that that was yeah, it was an issue. An issue. Um, I, I yeah, I basically do that anyways. I put right. tell you what comes to me. I'm like, uh, bring it to the commission. <laughs> um, but like, I think this would come in handy because, for example, I just had to I sign off on the building permits now um, because we had we've had issues in the past. So now, if there's a new build new building um, site work and anywhere in Lemon City, they have to come to my office, meet with me. I can tell them about the stormwater regulations and say, oh, you need to put you know a silt mm. you know silt fence in to protect the catch basins, etc. Um, but for example, I met with somebody, I signed his permit, I told him, oh, you know, try to be careful, we do have stormwater regulations, and then I got a complaint when he started work because dirt and mud was going down the road, was getting on neighbor's properties. I was able to kind of go out there, and I told him, oh, you need to put a truck pad in, and I, you know, I wrote him a little note, sent him an email, went back to the office, and there was, you know, another person went to inspect it for a different reason, and because I told him to put a truck pad in, he decided, I guess, to backfill the conduit that was supposed to be inspected, and it became an issue, and it's... So, like, if I have something in paper I can give someone every single time, yeah. it protects me, you know, for when I say something, then we don't have an issue, for example, on Willow Street, where, you know, the agent at the time told them, oh, yeah, you're fine, so you do this, you can, do, you can fill this in, and then it actually ends up that they're not, because this doesn't talk about fill on anywhere. Right, so I'm kind of, I don't quite understand why, why the lawyers would have a problem with it. Because the, the agent had made a determination that, um, something that was exempt and enough butter basically sued them. And the lawyers basically so came like back saying, like, mistake, huh? the lawyers basically came back saying technically they should have gone to the commission to, with an RDA. It was kind of a freak thing, but she didn't mention it to me. And some other yeah. towns don't do this because of that reason they don't want to deal with. But I mean, when you look at something, if, if they're, 
it's super minor. It if it's if it if it's not in our jurisdiction, yeah. I basically and, do it already. I just don't have right. any paperwork to right. We can't. Like, we have no say in it. You're just and I think you should have paperwork. You should have something to yeah. say, like, make your job like, like, the I paper trail. The figure <laughs> it is. Yeah, I just feel like it'll protect us in the yeah. future and it'll protect yeah. the homeowner in the long run and it gives mm -hmm. them something to refer to. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I talk to probably close to 150 people a week about their properties and I forget their names and I'm not, I'm human, so I cannot remember every single thing I say to every single person. I try to do it all by email, but you get phone calls, you get busy, you get called off into a meeting. So I think this would be really helpful, at least for me to track. Yeah, but I didn't want to not bring that to your attention yeah, no, and kind of have that in the background. I think you have to have, you know, the, the commission isn't here 24 seven for, yeah. you know, during the work week you are, and you're representing us and, and we need, we, we you know, we, we need that document, you know, that's why we voted to approve it. So I, 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 I'm glad you brought it to us, but I definitely think it's gonna benefit you, it's gonna b benefit the homeowners. Yeah, and if there's any concern, I can always put it as a, on the agenda, you know, admin, you know, as like my agent's report, you know, which admin approvals I did through the week, and I just kind of give you a rundown of what they were. Like, you don't need to vote on it or anything. And if anyone has any questions or concerns, we can discuss it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't think you, I, I trust your judgment in determining whether or not you feel that something is exempt. I think um, our meetings can be long enough already. I don't think we need to hear about every admin approval that you uh, that you do every week. I would just say if, if there's something particular that you think would be of interest to the commission or that you feel a certain way about, feel free to put it on the agenda. Um, does that sound like a Yeah, I feel like the simple, good, like, small, benign things don't... You know, yeah, offenses? Um, did, did we already approve this one? I know we approved the other one. Did we, we did not approve we, this one? We continued to this means for um, further review. Okay. Um, are we ready to vote to approve this? Does anybody want to make a motion? How do we approve this? To approve, we approve we the, the checklist, checklist. Oh. and the record policy. And we talked about this. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the administrative <coughs> Approval form for the Conservation Commission. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? All right, we have an admin approval form to make life easier. <laughs> um, all right, certificates of compliance. Um, we have 33 Nass Farm Road, 20 Nass Farm Road, and 26 Nass Farm Road. Um, so for 33 Nass Farm Road, which is DEP file number 199-970. Um, because of the lovely weather we've been having, I was able to go out to the site and take a look. Um, it's completely vegetated, everything's grown in. This is the house, not the one that we recently approved, or, well, older is hard, I'm like, for it. But it was the house next to it that's actually been there for a while, it's been occupied. Um, everything was done to plan. So I recommend issuing a certificate of compliance. I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice erosion lines. Even after all the snow, there was a really thick veg vegetated layer down the slope. So I didn't, you know, there's obviously no um, ruts or anything. So for that one, I recommend it, that the commission issue a certificate of compliance. Do we have the as built for that one? Yes. Hannah Gettin' Drain sent these to me in the winter. Okay. Understanding that we well, yeah. be able to review okay, them Okay, I just spring. didn't, as long as they have built in there so we have it. Yeah. But luckily, spring came early for us. Um, any discussion, questions, concerns? Do we have a motion to issue a COC? I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 33 Nass Farm Road, DEP file number 199-970. I'll second it. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Passes. Um, next one is 20 Nass Farm Road, file number 199-1007. So this one is on the other side of the lot that we recently, they had to come back in and file for. This one's on one side, this one's on the other. Um, the site also is completely vegetated. It's, it's been occupied for a couple years now. I think he's, we, I had a discussion with the contractor and I explained like why we need to clear the titles, we need to close out all the permits. So he's just working on it. Um, 
and I went up there, everything was done to plan. It looks like it may have moved a foot closer to the road. Um, it was really hard for me to measure down the slope because it is heavily vegetated, and the resource, this was in the outer 100-foot um, buffer. The, most of the work for this one was the grading. Um, they just had the edge of disturbance was part of the grading. None of the houses in it. Um, Everything looked to plan, other than it looked like it may have been a yeah. foot closer to the road. But does Yaz build? No, yeah, have, have the so the foot closer, it could have been me or the measuring tape because of the slope I was yeah. trying to. As long as the as built is. is, is yeah, the as built's accurate. Um, didn't show any differences in grading. Okay. So I'm com I feel comfortable issuing the CSC. Okay. That's my recommendation. Any questions or comments? Um, yeah, just one thing. I mean, I, I appreciate you doing all the measuring, but I mean, if, if we have an engineer plan, you know, I mean, that's a lot to go up there with the, the measuring tape and all that stuff. I mean, if you can look at it and it's it's pretty close and, and we have a stamped engineer, I mean, that engineer is yeah. putting his reputation on the line at that, because ultimately it's the foundation that, that that's the biggest about. concern. So if somebody puts their stamp on it and it's 20 feet in the wrong direction, then that, that's, a, that's a big deal for an engineer. Yeah, no, I agree. So. Yeah, I like to double check. I'm I a know. little. And I, got new, I, new, I got a new measuring tape that's very nice. Oh, good. You got a new measuring tape. That's good. She knows she's doing it. There you go. Um, I'll make a motion uh, to issue a certificate of compliance for 20 Nass Farm Road to EP file number 199 1007. One second. All in favor? Opposed? Passes. And. We have 26 Nass Farm Road, 199-1078. So this is the one that we recently permitted. Um, I did go out to the site. There isn't a lot of growth. Um, they finished construction in the winter and then it snowed literally the day after they sold the house. So I'm working with them. Uh, they're gonna go out there and hydro siege. They just wanna make sure that we're not gonna get a snowstorm in the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. no typical typical no March <laughs> in April. So I'm working with them. I you know. I recommend a continuance. I don't think the site the site is stable. Nothing's going beyond the erosion controls, but there's no growth at this time. So, okay. all right. So we'll continue that one. Um, our last COC is Three Royal Oaks Way, DEP one nine nine ten six six. I'd intended to go to the site as well, but there are new homeowners that con the the home the home was sold, and I couldn't get in contact with them. I didn't want to go on the site without them knowing I was there. Mm -hmm. Someone saw me in camera. So I still don't know if they have the growth and I'm hoping to hear back from them this week and get out there for the next meeting. Okay, so we'll continue that one. Um, all right, so that moves us to extension permits. Mm -hmm. at this time. And communications, Lemonster Trail Stewards. Yes, so the Lemonster Trail Stewards are looking for volunteers to help maintain the trails. Um, they're really trying to get a good group of people in there. They have a large group right now, but it's always the same, you know, 15, 30 people that are going. Um, and they're also trying to vamp up this whole new program, which is an adopt the show program. Um, I'm on, I'm working with them along with Mark Cameron from DPW, um, a couple of people from the city. We're kind of meeting with them quarterly to kind of go over the trails and make sure that they're getting all the permits they need. Um, and we're discussing different types of maintenance plans. Um, but I thought, you know, it's, what better group of people in the Conservation Commission to spread the word? <laughs> but, you know, they're really looking for volunteers, and Great. you can volunteer as much time as you like. Awesome. So if you know people that like to hike, tell them to go help clean the trails that they like to hike. <laughs> no, I think that's I think that's great. Uh, meeting minutes. Are we all able to vote on these ones? I know usually you put yes. Who you're able to vote on them. Um, I think only Larry and Paul and Liz are are able to um, make a motion. Okay. And maybe you. I forget if you were there. For your I had to. Then I I didn't. I know I didn't miss. I think both. Sam had the flu for a couple. Yeah. <laughs> he was out for one. I know I didn't miss both January meetings. Oh, so I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I was there. Just to be safe. Yeah. Um, Paul, me and Paul talked about, um, I do need to go over the June ones and kind of re-edit them. Yeah, okay. June There's some confusion. So we're going to keep that, we're going to keep that out on there. 
How about the January 21st and January 28th, 2020 minutes? Lizard Paul. I looked those over, they look fine to me. Yeah, I was fine with them, so if... I would make a motion to accept the January 21st, 2020 minutes as written. I'll second. it. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. How about January 28th? I looked those over as well, and they look fine. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, January 28th, 2020 minutes. I'll say it. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Perfect. So, this can be moved off. And then it looks like we have uh, one emergency certification. Yes, sorry. So, are you okay? <laughs> Just choking on my spit. <laughs> 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 um, so I was contacted by Conservator from the Veterans Center. During the high winds we had the past couple weeks, there was two trees, um, and the Veterans Center is on Rockwell Pond. The trees have been, they were blown over, and they were cracked at the base, and one of them was leaning in the building, one of them was leaning kind of over a walkway. I went out and looked at it. Um, I told him, yeah, you can take those down. Obviously, they're a risk. He was working to coordinate DBW, and now one of them, the other high winds we have is leaning back the other way. Um, so I recommended you know, that they obviously take them down for safety issues where you keep blowing the wind on a cracked base. So I think DPW went out today or went out tomorrow to remove them and um, work with them. I have to call them to go out and inspect the site afterwards. They're going to leave the stumps in place. Um, I'm going to check afterwards for erosion, um, but I've been working on training with them and you know being aware of where they're cutting and keeping everything out. The tree that's leaning over Rockwell Pond, it wasn't <laughs> it blew over. so. They said, you know, they can't go into, they don't want to go into the pond to cut it, so they're going to cut it, and then they're going to carefully pull it out without disturbing anything the best they can. Um, they don't want to leave it in the pond, because if it goes down and hits the dam, they don't want to risk of it clogging anything. That's contaminated soil, too. They're not supposed to disturb the... Yeah, they're, they're trying to... Yeah. They said, don't, just, we can't disturb the, the, the soil, because it's yeah. heavy metals. So they're going it, it won't be a large disturbance. It's not a large tree. It's the very light yeah. dead trees. I have a feeling it's going to float <laughs> when it hits the water. They're going to do their best to try and catch it beforehand, but they did warn me that they may have to remove it from the water. And I said, just get it down. Probably well, a yeah. little guy falls in there every year, even though it's not. It's not yeah. Large. I guess the tree is not going to be any worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. The little guy, I forgot. The lifeguard. So, well, as, yeah. So I just, the question has any questions? Do we have to do anything with the emergency certifications or that? Just ratify it. You just had to ratify it, so to vote to ratify Okay. So do I have a vote to ratify the emergency certifications for those tree cuttings? I'll make a motion to ratify the emergency certification for removal of the uh, damaged trees at the Lundus Veterans Center. I second. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Project update requests. Does anybody have any questions about any existing projects that we have going on at the moment? Okay. Budget. Any updates on budget that we need to know about? I'm working on updating it. It's, um, as you guys know, it's been very busy. We've <laughs> got a lot of permits. <laughs> um, so I'm updating the budget and then I'm doing my yearly budget requests um, for the mayor's office and the comptroller's office. And I'll submit a copy to the commission once it's completed. And to Larry after he leaves, of course. <laughs> Just so that he knows. <laughs> Keep him informed. Free of see. Information Act. Let's see, see him on everything. <laughs> Um, so our next meeting is Tuesday, March 24th. Deadline was this past Friday, March 6th. Um, and unless there's anything else that we need to discuss, yes. I just want to say, this is Larry and Paul's last meeting. We got one more. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. I think so, the staffing so, was yes. <laughs> so you can say that for next. Okay. Anyway, never mind. I changed my mind. Okay. Wait, maybe it is? Did you told me this meeting, so. No, no, no you keep saying. No, no. It's, it's I still have one more. I still have more. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Stick around. Well, and I'm, I don't really. I mean, she announced it, so. so. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. They'll be here for the next meeting next week. <laughs> right. Two weeks. Two weeks. So, never mind. Sorry. Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on the on the agenda for for next week. Oh, I will. <laughs> Announcement. Okay. Um. Yeah. 
So if there's not anything else that anybody needs to, to bring up or discuss, mm -hmm. do I have a motion to adjourn tonight? Motion to adjourn. Do you want to second that motion? Second. All in favor of adjourning? Opposed? Great.